uh, this meeting is now called to order and uh, I welcome everyone to our first virtual hearing uh, of the Committee on Basic Education, Culture and the Arts. And uh, let me recognize the uh, centers who are present with us today. Uh, Senator Nancy Binay is uh, present. Senator uh, Pia Cayetano, I saw her on the list uh, of um, uh, senators logged on. Senator Joel Villanueva, who also has a bill. Uh, later on, he will sponsor the bill. Uh, with you. us is also Senator Kiko Pangilinan and Senator Amy Marcos. Um, with that, uh, Comsec, uh, please acknowledge our resource persons for today. Good morning, sir. Good morning. May we acknowledge the virtual presence of uh, Undersecretary Annalyn M. Sabilia. Undersecretary, Undersecretary Tonisito Mali, also from the Department of Education. Assistant Secretary GHS Ambat. Good morning. Attorney Joseph Estrada from the Cocopea. Good morning, Bob. Uh, Dr. Mirna Kabotahe, Interagency Task Force on Emerging Infectious Diseases, IATF. From the Department, uh, from the National Telecommunications Commission, Deputy Commissioner Edgardo Cabarios. From the Department of Information and Communications Technology, Chief of Staff, Doroteo Samodo. Uh, Attorney Chad Mosposo. Uh, from the National Association of Public Secondary Schools in the Philippines, Mr. Warlito Rosarial, National President. From INET Philippines, Ms. Flora Arellano, President. Uh, from the United Nations Scientific and Cultural Organization, uh, OIC Secretary General Ernesto Aquila, uh, Deputy Executive Director Lindsay Barrientos, and Program Officer Rex Obak Jr. That's all, sir. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Comsec. And um, did I acknowledge all the senators? Uh, aside from the centers I mentioned earlier, Mer meron bang Anyways, uh, right, and let me acknowledge also Senator uh, Francis Tolentino, who's also one of the authors uh, uh, of one of the measures. Um, Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Well, pardon me for my um, not getting used to do this uh, virtual hearing. Uh, first time mo natin mag virtual hearing. And uh, obviously, this is being done in light of what's happening in our country which is the spread of the uh, coronavirus. And uh, una, I hope everyone is doing well. Everyone is safe at home. Uh, sana po wala ho nagba-birthday party ho sa inyo at lahat ho tayo eh nasa bahay lang. Uh, bawal ho mag-birthday party ngayon. Uh, let's stay at home for the sake of our uh, uh, families and our community. And um, uh, today we'll be um, talking about... Um, a resolution which I filed, and this resolution will be um, uh, exploring uh, deeply into the effects of COVID-19 into the education sector. Uh, what we want to uh, understand from the Department of Education is the effects of uh, COVID-19 to, to uh, our learners, our uh, parents, and also our teachers. And uh, we want to see the um, negative uh, effects of um, COVID-19 to the way we teach and to the way we deliver education. And also, we want to understand also the uh, 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 intended class opening this coming uh, August 24. Uh, we want to know moving forward, what are the uh, uh, mitigating measures that uh, the Department of Education will be implementing of course, ang pinaka importante dito, the primordial concern is the safety of our learners, parents, and teachers. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, we deliver education within the minimum health standards as prescribed by international agencies. And we want to make sure that ligta sila. No? Uh, makakapagturo tayo, makakapagbigay tayo ng dekalidad na edukasyon, 
na hindi ho sila nalalagay sa alanganin uh, ang kanilang kalusugan. And with that, uh, we will also be uh, tackling four bills uh, uh, that were filed by Senator Joel Villanueva, Senator Francis Tolentino, two bills actually filed by Senator Francis Tolentino, and no less than our Senate President, Senate President Tito Soto. Uh, for an orderly discussion today, we divided the uh, topics into three parts. Uh, number one is the effects of COVID on the education sector. Uh, we will leave that to DepEd. And then number two, uh, we will discuss about the school opening um, this coming August 20, uh, August 24, correct? Uh, and we want to go deeply and uh, comprehensively on the measures that DepEd will be implementing um, before, during, and after the school opening. And then number three, we will talk about the four bills that were filed. The bills are quite straightforward, although the impact is very important and timely. Uh, with that, I would like to recognize uh, Senator John Villanueva uh, to sponsor his measure. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, isaong mapagpalang uh, araw sa ating lahat. I'd like to first of all commend our distinguished colleague, our seatmate, uh, Mr. Chairman, Senator Win Gachelian, for uh, immediately calling for this uh, uh, very important uh, hearing. Uh, we filed the uh, Senate Bill number uh, 1452 to amend a 25 year old law, Republic Act number 7977, which maintains the opening of classes on the first Monday of June, but not later than the last day of August for both public and private elementary and secondary schools. Our situation is not a short term hit like Typhoon, where we can simply suspend classes. COVID-19 is something new to all of us. This may be the first time that our generation is facing such a pandemic. Our lives will not be the same afterwards. There's no going back to normal, as they say. Right now, our hands are tied with the law as regards to the opening of school year. We need a new approach, a new solution. I believe it is flexibility. I know that the school opening date next school year was selected partly based on an online survey of 700,000 respondents. But this flexibility, and I would uh, continue to emphasize the word flexibility uh, I'm talking about, should not be solely dictated by an opinion survey, but all the more so by science, uh, by medical data, and other relevant factors. Under Senate Bill number 1452, we want to authorize the Secretary of Education to prescribe a different date for the start of the school year per region, per area, in the event of a declaration of state of emergency, state of calamity, or similar occurrence. We want to give the Secretary of Education the flexibility to open the school year 2020 to 2021 anytime after August and to take a cue from the assessment and recommendation of the interagency task force, considering that experts from uh, the, U the UP Resilience uh, Institute have pointed out that the suspension of classes until December or the end of the year would be an effective way to limit further COVID-19 infect infections. According to Dr. Lagmay, the executive director of the Institute, 56% or majority of physical interactions among age groups happen among the zero to 19 age group. And that this age group is most likely to interact with the elderly who are considered to be vulnerable to the coronavirus disease. There's no denying that the lockdown of our education institutions is causing major interruption in students' learning. Hence, we want DepEd to utilize alternative modalities of learning like digital learning, radio or television instruction, or combination of various modalities to ensure educational continuity during school closures. I believe that the amendment of RA 7977 is a proactive response to emerging infectious diseases and God forbid, a second wave of coronavirus spread. Hence, for the sake, not only of our children and youth, but also of teaching and non-teaching personnel in our schools and in, pub in the public in general, approval of this bill is earnestly sought. Muli, maraming salamat po, uh, Mr. Chairman, at sa lahat, palain po tayong lahat ng ating Panginoong Diyos. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Joel. Uh, 
um, Senator Francis, do you also want to give a, a short uh, sponsorship uh, uh, note? Senator Yes, we uh, Senator, uh, Senator Lin. Uh, it is also in line with uh, what Senator Villanueva stated. Uh, my, my bills are, as what you said, very straightforward. Uh, there might be some differences, probably in wordings and some, but the intention would be the same. But uh, for Senate Bill 1457, it would be very straightforward given the uh, Secretary of the Department of Education. Uh, the power to prepare the start of the school year to a, a date later than August. And this would refer not just to the current uh, COVID-19 pandemic, but even uh, for other calamities. As, as we all know, we're now uh, about to be hammered by uh, Typhoon Apo, uh, especially Region 8 and uh, parts of uh, Region 7 and Region 4A. So if this happens uh, during the latter part of August, the Secretary of Education will have the ample power. And Senate Bill 1458 uh, refers to the same uh, emergencies and calamities, but uh, giving the Secretary the power to shorten the 220 20 class days uh, currently being implemented, as well as uh, giving the Secretary the mandate to provide passing marks and automatic promotion to the next higher educational level of all our learners. So, uh, Mr. Chair, the, the purpose of, of the bills, the twin bills, uh, in this representation file, is to enable our uh, learners and students, and the parents, the teachers, and the educational institutions to cope and adjust with calamities and crises. And I, I can recall, even my speech yesterday, at the Senate uh, Plenary Hall uh, with regards to the Taal Volcano crisis, which is still not yet over, as we have 900 families, uh, as we have 900 families still uh, affected and still in the evacuation center, I think uh, the, the immediate passage of, of uh, that the bills uh, it is uh, consolidated by, by this committee is in, is in order. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, I have several questions, uh, Mr. Chair, but I note that the uh, Secretariat uh, at this early stage, and probably we still have time, the Secretariat forgot to invite uh, PTD4. Uh, PTD4 is an important uh, tag in this, uh, with due respect, in this committee hearing, because some of the proposals would involve uh, distance education and PTD4, the government uh, television network. Uh, would be of great help. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Tolentino. And uh, we will take note of the uh, uh, um, presence of or or, or non-presence of the of PTV4, and we will require them to submit to us a position paper instead. But uh, in lieu of PTV4, we invited the uh, NTC uh, to also shed light on uh, not on ABS-CBN, but on the possibility of. Uh, uh, using television, radio as a means to deliver uh, quality education to our learners. Uh, before we move forward, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we I just want to reiterate some house rules so that uh, uh, we'll have an orderly discussion today. Uh, number one is mute your mics. Uh, Pakamute po yung mga mikropono ho ng computer ninyo. Ayaw nating uh, magaya po kay Senator Villar. Uh, kaya pakimute ho mabuti yung uh, mic ho ninyo. Paki switch off rin yung monitor nyo kung hindi nyo kailangan ho uh, magpakita or uh, meron hong dumadaan sa likod nyo, baka ano po hong makita ho namin uh, pag hindi nyo sinwitch off yung mikropono nyo. And then kung magsasalita ho kayo, please raise your hands. Um, I'm, I'm using an iPad right now. I might not see everyone, uh, but um, uh, uh, the ComSec uh, will help me uh, flag or point to me who are the people raising their hands, but uh, I'll try to my best to um, locate those who raise uh, their hands and uh, who would want to speak. And then number four, uh, ito sinabi ho ni Senator Nancy, uh, moving forward, please submit to us your materials and position paper um, two days in advance so that we can process them and we can uh, 
uh, distribute them to the members of the committee. Uh, with that, um, ladies and gentlemen, we will now move to um, the first uh, topic of uh, today, Mr. which is... President. Mr. Chair, I'm raising my hand. Can I just say something before you ah, yes, start? Yes, enter. Yeah, sorry, yeah, because I'm using an iPad, so I couldn't no see. No problem. There's only nine, nine quadrants here, so no problem. go ahead. Yeah. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, Mr. Chair, I just want to put on record that I don't have any resolution or bill that you are hearing today. However, in the last um, comments that the Senate officially files and uh, sends to Malacanang in response to the President's report, I have repeatedly mentioned there uh, the need for futures thinking and the need to explore different modalities of learning for DepEd. So uh, technically, although I do not have a resolution, um, my concerns have already been put on record and I believe delivered to DepEd. Likewise, I have a hearing uh, which everyone is invited to later on at one o'clock. Um, this was, we, we had our earlier discussions with the chair, with Senator Gachalian, um, to jointly hear this because um, the Committee on <clears throat> Sustainable Development Goals, Innovation and Futures Thinking, although it is tackling um, the concept of futures thinking and how we can include futures thinking in everything that we do, uh, one of the main agencies that uh, needs to put this in place right away is DepEd. So you're all invited also to the one o'clock hearing. I may not be able to stay for the duration of this hearing, so I just wanted to put that on record. Um, I'm, I'm almost certain that DepEd will, will discuss it to a certain extent, but um, the chair and I can discuss this further because I strongly believe that you need to have a separate discussion really on changing that mindset, not just for DepEd, no, but for all the uh, other learning institutions, no, because um, basically we really should just take advantage of this crisis and start uh, changing our mindset to have that way of thinking, to adjust to the new norm. And you can't really do that without strategically analyzing what the future will look like. So I just want to put that on record so that for those who are interested in learning more and who should, because you are teaching our children, um, we have a hearing at one o'clock and we can just share the materials with you if you cannot attend. Thank you. Yeah, and I, I do confirm that uh, uh, we both uh, agreed that to hold another um, hearing uh, this afternoon on futures thinking, uh, primarily discussing some of the uh, concepts uh, that surrounds uh, education and how to move forward with um, uh, with the situation right now. Uh, definitely, the pandemic has opened a lot of um, possibilities for us to evolve into a more dynamic and a more resilient and a more adaptable. Uh, society and um, the the hearing this afternoon will look at uh, the opportunities no, that this pandemic somehow presented to uh, the education sector. Definitely, marami ho tayong pwedeng matutunan sa mga nangyayari ngayon. And uh, but we need to think strategically uh, and, and also look at um, uh, the long-term possibilities that we can use in order to strengthen the sector. So with that, um, uh, we'll now move into the discussion of PS uh, Resolution 391, which is the effects of COVID to the education sector. And we'd like to turn over the uh, microphone to the Department of Education uh, to present to us their uh, uh, findings on the effects of COVID in the short term. And then uh, later on, uh, we'll move into the discussion on class openings and uh, what are the uh, uh, mitigating uh, mechanisms that they will employ in order to make sure that our children are safe. Children, um, teachers, and parents are safe uh, in our school uh, premises. With that, I turn over the microphone to uh, the Department of Education. Hello, Senator. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, uh, uh, my problem lang ako, Senator. There's a brownout in our house. 
Okay. So the, the connection is so intermittent, but I have other undersecretaries here. Uh -oh. Undersecretary Dad San Antonio is representing our curriculum and instruction. Uh, Yusek Tony Umali uh, as our head for the legislative. And uh, Yusek Jess Mateo, I hope, is also around for our governance and operation. And ASEC GH Ambat as well. Um, I think we have a presentation. If Yusek Tony is around, maybe he, he can uh, he can proceed and uh, introduce our um, other members who will discuss. I'm actually around Senator to check if there will be any financial implications. So uh, I'll be observing as well, uh, Senator. But Sige, our so who will be presenting? Presenting in your behalf on, on the you behalf. That? Okay. Yeah, you said that. Are you around? Thank you, for Senator. Thank you. You said that. Uh, you're recognized. Good morning, Paul. Hello. Yes, you said we can hear you. Um, good morning, uh, Senators. Good morning, uh, fellow editors. Um, I think we have um, sent po the LCP our presentation on the learning continuity plan, which will some address uh, the concerns that um, the resolution like to address. Um, this is the presentation of the okay. and APC. She has to do other important things. Um, I don't know who would have to upload the, the file. Okay. It be your... It has been sent, I, I believe, um, okay. to the secretary. Yeah. Uh, Comsec, can you uh, please uh, flash the presentation? Yeah, it was already sent to Ms. Maya, Comsec. You said that, so I'm waiting for the PowerPoint. Uh, you can go ahead and discuss the uh, salient points uh, of, of uh, your presentation so that we won't waste time. Morning again. Yeah, so we'll actually uh, share the pieces uh, for the preparation of uh, learning continuity plan. And we'll also hopefully uh, share what FN has been able to accomplish while preparing. Uh, the opening of uh, school year 2020-2021. We also uh, shared highlights of our school calendar for 2020-2021. And um, also the um, discussions on um, uh, multiple learning modalities that the Department of Education will make available to all learners depending on the situations of the uh, of the schools, the, the learners, and uh, like the category ATF uh, assigned to certain places. We'll also um, hopefully share um, with the other users here uh, other protocols that uh, is actually um, trying to come up so uh, we can really make sure that uh, uh, opening of school year 2020-2021 will be um, smooth and um, as you have been saying, um, we should not forget that uh, the quality has, does not have to be sacrificed even if we um, do this. We can also um, start. Uh, Sharing, um, it's uh, we would like to uh, make sure that uh, the presentation is entitled Education will Continue. This is uh, this has been by the Secretary of Education, Sir Emeritus Jonor Magdolis Briones. Um, and um, so main impact of COVID on education, plus other school activities for the remaining weeks of school year 29. 2020 had to be cancelled. School year 2020-2021, that ed needs to find ways for learning to continue while ensuring the health, safety, and welfare of all learners, teachers, 
and personal have gotten I mean COVID-19. So it's really important that the safety and health and welfare of uh, everyone involved in the pursuit of basic education is um, protected. Um, you for said, our basic you said, yes. you said that you, yung, you're, you're breaking up. No? Um, uh, I don't know how you can adjust your uh, internet levels there, but uh, medyo nagbe-break up kayo, uh, you said. Actually, I opened a uh, version of the CP so I could start uh, sharing the, the presentation uh, while the secretariat. So I have to really open another my video so I can proceed with the presentation. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, okay. yes. yes. Uh, if you have a copy of your presentation, please flash it now. I don't know how to do it, but I can proceed with my presentation. I mean, my sharing using the one I have on my laptop. There's a way to do it. I'll try. There's um, a um, you can you can you can flash it. Eh. There's an arrow up. That's the upload. Ah, uh, this one. Share a content. Uh, hope this is the right yes is it seen now you can see it you can see it oh okay oh. 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 Are you able to see it now, uh, Senator Win? Not yet. I'm, we can see I'm it exactly now. Okay. 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 So, um, yes. Uh, so, the basic education learning continuity plan um, was developed to provide guidance to the department on how to deliver education in this time of crisis, ensuring the health, safety, and welfare of all learners teachers and personnel of deaf ed. It was really uh, a, a highly participatory um, initiative. Uh, you were there, you took part in some of the meetings. Inputs from different units and field offices of the department were considered inputs from the Philippine Forum for Inclusive Quality Basic Education or the EDUC Forum were also considered advice from the chairpersons of House and Senate committees on basic education were sought. Online survey uh, was also done, and the survey of teachers' readiness for distance learning delivery was also undertaken. Um, the principles um, in developing the basic education learning continuity plan uh, were one, to protect the health, safety, and well being of everybody. Second, was to ensure that learning will really continue through the K 12 curriculum adjustments, alignment of learning materials implementation of multiple learning delivery modalities and providing corresponding teacher and parent guardian training. We, the other principle is facilitating the safe return of teaching and non-teaching personnel and learners to work and schools based on skills projected by the Department of Health in the IATF. And uh, the fourth principle is being sensitive to equity concerns. We know that uh, if we resort to certain um, learning modalities, some sectors may be at a disadvantage. And the fifth one is linking and bridging the basic education learning continuity plan to the depth and speed to quality and into the future of education under the framework of Sulong Edukalidad and futures thinking and education as cited by Senator Kia. The secretary has been working on uh, with the uh, like a futures thinking unit in within that ed. So yes, uh, we're doing it now. Uh, concern over school opening in the context of COVID-19, the concern over basic education is the magnitude of moving and congregating learners, teachers and education personnel nationwide if schools open in traditional way. So basic education directly accounts for nearly 30 million individuals, not counting the anti services supporting the education system. 
in including transport, food, and other services. We have like 27 million plus learners from K to 12 and all, 900,000 teachers and personnel, 300,000 private school teachers and personnel. This represents about 27.8% of the estimated 108 million current Philippine population and 20% higher in number than the total number of people employed in the services sector, the biggest employer of the country's labor force. What happens beyond May 15 in relation to basic education is contingent on a general COVID-19 COVID epidemiological picture and b understanding specific risk factors for infection among school-aged children, especially in school setting, to inform depth and sec sector-specific evidence-based risk assessment and risk mitigation and response measures. Um, the general ep epidemiological projections um, are shown here. ECQ has brought the time varying reproduction number from a range of three to four ECQ to an estimated um, shorter one. As shown here, um, it really appears that the uh, trend is towards a flattening or yes, lessening the number of cases. We also um, have this uh, figure showing the risk factors among school age children, five to 19 age group, has low incidence of infection in the Philippines. Uh, this uh, table shows that uh, infection is not really very common among the age group we serve. Um, we uh, confirmed by briefing note of WHO, um, a systematic review of 45 papers published by um, March 28, um, 2020 found that children have only accounted for one to 5% of all cases. 90% of cases had symptomatic mild or moderate disease. Median recovery time is also shorter than in adults. One 10 month old child and one 14 year old child have been reported to have died in China. No additional de deaths in this age group had been reported in more recent reports. No deaths in children had been reported in Italy or the US at the time of publication. Of 366 children hospitalized in January in central Wuhan, only six, 1.6% tested positive for SARS-CoV-2. Median age was three years and all recovered. Another study from China found that uh, um, only 5% of all cases reported were in children aged 1 to 16 years, median age 8, and 28% of patients were asymptomatic and 47% only displayed mild symptoms. This were, there were no deaths in this age group. The mode of transmission in 89% of cases was from close family contact. Next slide. Oh, it does not. Public health principles for a phased reopening during COVID-19 guidance for governors uh, by the Center for Health Security of the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health um, title. However, it is still not known what role children play in the transmission of SARS-CoV-2 for uh, other viral illnesses like influence or drivers of transmission. Early and prolonged school closures have been shown to reduce overall community transmission of influence. Some evidence that COVID-19 produces more mild illnesses in children, and therefore it may be le less likely to be detected than in adults. However, without more evidence, it is difficult to quantify the role of children in propagating COVID-19 to other students, members, teachers, and school staff. End of quote. To DOH risk severity grading in public health standards for schools. Even as a uh, role children play in transmission in school setting needs further study, DepEd acknowledges the high volume of contact and high degree of contact intensity in school settings. Add to this the magnitude of the population directly covered by the sector and the opening of schools produces a potential hotspot for transmission and a public health concern. Thus, 
the Department of Education adheres to the position of closure of schools or use of alternative learning modalities, online distance learning, in risk severity, in the risk severity grading and risk-based public health standards provided by DOH in, an, in its administrative, administrative order number 2020-15 slash 15 dated April 27, 2020. The DOH risk severity grading is divided into low, moderate, and high based on classification tool that takes into account the case doubling time and critical care utilization rate. For moderate and high, schools are to be closed mandatorily. For low risk severity grading, closure of schools is can do or optional. We take it that the option will be exercised by DepEd based on its risk assessment and visibility of risk mitigation and response measures. Physical distancing is mandatory for all risk severity levels, which will require DepEd to reduce class size to 15 to 20 learners per classroom from the present 30 to 40 learners per classroom. Summary of COVID-19 picture beyond May 15 in relation to basic education. Full containment is not yet attained given the Philippine projections and the fact that the pandemic is still raging. Suspension of face-to-face -face classes will remain mandatory in areas categorized as moderate and high risk based on DOH risk severity grading. However, the IATF and the Office of the President may make a more aggressive mobility restriction such as in EO112 where a general community quarantine is imposed in all low and moderate risk areas with physical classes suspended. In low risk, risk areas where face-to-face -face classes may be allowed, physical distancing will still be required, in turn needing an adjustment in class size. Low risk areas may experience an outbreak resurgence anytime, requiring, requiring suspension of face-to-face -face classes. So the Secretary of Education, Ma'am Liling, presented to IATF on May 8, 2020, the learning continuity plan of the Department of Education and the school opening uh, for 2020-2021 um, proposals. And the IATF resolved that opening of classes for the basic education on 24 August and ending on 30 April, 2021. Opening of private schools will be allowed within the period provided by law. Provided that the school learning continuity plan shall be submitted, no face-to-face -face classes will be allowed earlier than August 24, 2020. And from August 24, face-to-face -face learning shall only be allowed when the local risk severity grading permits and subject to compliance with minimum health standards. The other... Um, IATF resolution also, resolution also in, included adoption of various learning delivery options, such as but not limited to face-to-face, -to -face, blended learning, distance learning, and homeschooling, and other modes of delivery shall be implemented depending on the local COVID risk severity classification and compliance with minimum health standards. Conduct of curricular and co-curricular activities involving gatherings such as science fairs, showcase of portfolios, trade fairs, school sports, campus journalism, festival of talents, job fairs, and other similar activities is canceled, except those conducted online. Secretary Martin Andanar offered the use of the government's television and radio stations for the implementation of the basic education learning continuity plan, especially for distance learning programs. School calendar, let's now talk about the school calendar and activities for school year 2020-2021. I would like to assure everyone, as I have presented to the IATA, this is the secretary speaking, that we will observe all the guidelines of the Department of Health and the IATF on whether the restriction in a locality will allow face-to-face -face attendance in schools or not. We will implement a safe back-to-school program consisting of health standards that will ensure everyone's safety in areas that will already allow physical attendance in schools. Distance learning will be a major component of learning delivery for the incoming school year. We are working double time to ready our system, central and field units, to deliver accessible and quality distance education. Highlights of the school calendar and activities. After consultations and internal discussions, 
it's DepEd a decision to set the opening of the school year 2020-2021 on August 24, 2020. However, the days in August prior to the formal school opening will be used to provide learners with assignments to explore foundational deepening during the year, orientation on the utilization of alternative learning delivery modalities, and corresponding learners' material, and mental health and psychosocial support activities. These pre-opening activities devoted to the attainment of the learning objectives for the school year is indicated in number one shall be counted as class days, as indicated in our debit order. The school year will end on April 30, 2021. Because of the compressed school year, uh, the secretary is exercising the prerogative to authorize the conduct of distance learning activities on Saturdays. Should religious considerations prohibit these Saturday activities, they shall be undertaken on, on Sunday in all the total days in the 2020-2021 school calendar will be 203 days. School opening will not necessarily mean traditional face-to-face -face learning in classroom. The physical opening of schools will the risk severity grading or classification of a locality pursuant to guidelines of the DOH, IATF, or the Office of the President. Even in areas where schools are allowed to open, physical distancing will still be required, which will necessitate school combine face-to-face learning with distance learning. Schools and uh, the community learning centers under the supervision of the regional and division offices are authorized to decide on the specific learning delivery modalities. Delivery modalities such as blended and online delivery modes through the learning resources portal and DepEd Commons, use of TV and radio and learning modules and packets both in print and digital format, which may be deemed appropriate in their context. Where face-to-face -face modality is allowed, there shall only be a maximum of 15 to 20 learners in each class in compliance with the social distancing measures set by the Department of Health. Private schools and state, local universities and colleges offering basic education will be allowed to open classes within the period authorized by Republic Act 7797, which is the this is on the first Monday of June, but not later than the last day of August, provided no face-to-face -face classes will be allowed earlier. I think I mentioned this earlier. The private schools, SUCs and SUCs offering basic education are enjoined to submit their uh, plan for compliance minimum health standards that will be issued by DepEd, consistent with guidelines by the Department of Health, Interage Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases, and the Office of the President. Private schools and um, other uh, state cities and colleges offering will also be allowed. There are they are required to have learning continuity plan showing alternative delivery modes of learning when face-to-face -face is not allowed in accordance with the guidelines to be issued by the department. Said schools should respective regional offices regarding any deviation from the school calendar start rendering services on June 1, 2020, upon completion of some on May 31, 2020. They will attend orientation and training activities on the utility, the distance learning delivery modalities, prepare instructional materials or learning activities, plan the organization of classes in consideration of the learning delivery modalities to be employed. If skeleton workforce will still be the operative government guidelines by June, DepEd shall issue the appropriate alternative work arrangements guidelines to the field to comply with prevailing policy and to ensure safe work environment. Regarding the Escuela and Oplan Balik Escuela will be undertaken from June 1. Yes. Yes, Pop? Mr. Chair, if I can interject. Um, if Mr. it's Chair. okay with uh, Senator Francis, if it's okay. Uh, we'll let uh, Yusek Dad finish lang so that uh, we can go with the questions tuloy tuloy na after. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you. Chair? You, uh, Mr. Chair? Chair? Yes, yes, uh, uh, Senator Nancy. Yeah, may we know lang kung gaano kahaba pa yung presentation? Uh, uh, we'll, we, we can shorten it po. Uh, I have 47 slides. I'm now, I'm now on the 29th slide. You, you said let's, okay. let's, go, uh, let's, go to the, let's go to the main points. 
students. So we have streamlined the curriculum. This slide shows you that uh, the competencies, um, we have identified the most essential learning competencies as uh, the basis for developing uh, learning materials and uh, self-learning uh, modules and other things. So modalities, we've been saying this, face-to-face, -face, distance learning, blended, uh, homeschooling. And then we also will prepare the teachers and the school leaders for distance learning. Minimum health standards will issue. Uh, there are elements of the DepEd health standards. I don't have to give you all the details. Reduce transmission, reduce contact, reduce duration of infection, and do other things will be allowed to contextualize learning strategies and learning delivery modalities. Brigada Escuela and Oplan Balik Escuela, as mentioned earlier, will still happen in a different way. And then we'll have finance, legal communications, monitoring as other aspects of the, the LCP, uh, considering the social and economic factors, um, like equity issue, as I've mentioned, impact on learning outcomes, administrative and operational burden to teachers. Uh, security factors are also explored in our learning continuity plan. Uh, anchor this to localidad and bridging to the future. It's not a standalone program, the LCP. It is anchored on the Sulong Edu Calidad uh, or it's people to quality. COVID-19 will highlight other strains of inequities to the education system, particularly in access to technology. DepEd will focus on enduring literacies and skills in our learning delivery modalities, technologies, strategies, resources, assessment, and in teachers, school leader capacity building. All efforts and initiatives to implement the LCP will greatly depend on family and community support. We need to prepare not only the schools, learners, administrators, and teaching and non-teaching personnel, but also the parents or guardians of the learners. We shall endeavor to have strong engagement by national agencies, private organizations, and other stakeholders in contributing to edu educational needs, especially at this critical time. DepEd resilience. DepEd has historically demonstrated an ability to respond to adversities and deliver on its commitments and responsibilities during elections, disaster response, present example of two big ongoing national events, NFOT and NSPC at the start of ECQ, has a working governance system from central office to field units up to the level of schools. The implementation of the LCP will not be easy. Thus, we seek the understanding, support, and solidarity of our deaf and family and all our stakeholders in true spirit of unity by Yaniha for mutual help. Thank you very much, Senator Wynn. Thank you. Thank you, Yusek. That's, um, I know our senators have some questions. Uh, Senator uh, Aimee texted me. Senator Aimee, floor is open for queries. Yes, th thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, and uh, thank you for your uh, patience and forbearance, uh, which is clearly greater than mine. Um, <laughs> let me simply say that we need to cut to the chase and determine the uh, uh, first uh, most obvious question. At uh, yun ang brief ng uh, opening oh, of the Ang sinasabi nila, yung RA 7977 compels them to open for X number of days and for a minimum number of hours. Ano talaga ang recommendation ng DepEd? Kasi, ang ba naman ang Senado at ang Kongreso na baguhin ang batas na yan kung ano yung gusto ninyo? Yes, Mr. Chair, can you hear me pa? You said that. Uh, you said that. Sandali po. Hello. You said that. Narinig niyo yung tanong ni uh, Senator Marcos? In terms of... Yes, you said uh, that. What is your actual preferred date? Ano talaga yung gusto ninyo? Kasi sinasabi ninyo na obligado kayo magbukas by the end of August dahil sa batas na RA 7977. Andito po kami lahat, handa na baguhin yan para maging ayon sa inyong kagustuhan at angkop sa bagong new normal na. Sa amin ano po, yung date na talagang gusto ninyo? Actually, yung date po talaga ang gusto namin. Nagkataon lang na yung gusto namin ay within the 
period allowed by law. Kasi, yun nga po, nagtanong-tanong kami sa, with, among ourselves, it was really the Uh, sigurado ko kayo kasagsagan nito ng rainy season at uh, marami sa ating kababayan ay uh, mahihirapan magsipuntahan. Yung ating um, ibang doktor nagsasabi na baka mahirapan magkumpul-kumpul uh, sa mga classroom samantalang ang ating digital, online, distance learning ay talagang uh, kaduda-duda pa ang ating kapasidad. Uh, sigurado ba kayo na nasa August tayo? Ito na ang pinakamagandang date. So tingin ko po, opo, we are at po, preparing the learning resources so that by August 24, we can start with uh, formal lessons, even on distance mode, if the place is not allowed to have in which, in which case, Yusek, you have no need for any amendment at all in the law. Is that correct? Um... Well, ano naman po, yung idea of giving the secretary more flexibility would really uh, make it easier for them and make adjustments later. Oh, sige po. Uh, Mr. Chair, perhaps there are other opinions from Kokopea regarding the date of opening. Pakinggan na lang po natin. Thank you po. Yes, Thank you we, po. before we go to Kokopea, we'll recognize Senator uh, Francis. Center Francis. Nandiyan po kayo, Senator Tolentino. Yes, Mr. Chair, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you now. Go yes. ahead. Uh, I, I, would, I would have batted in kanina yung presentation. Uh, I, I was uh, refrained by your honor, but I would have wanted to ask the whoever was making the presentation, ano po ang status nito? Tama po yung kay Senator Ivy, hindi naman dapat uh, nakatali lang sa August kasi pwede ka natin pagiging batas kahit uh, September. Pero on another point, um, Mr. Chair, relative to the presentation made a while ago, ano po ang status nitong DepEd Commons? Uh, ito po yung sinasabi ng DepEd na pagbibigay sa kanila ng kahandaan dahil uh, ito po yung platform para sa mga public school public school teachers to support uh, distance learning modality. Pero uh, sa pagkakaalam ko po, from what I know, Mr. Chair, eh, nilunsad po nila ito March 2020, ngayon taon na ito, itong Dot Ed Commons. So kung March 2020, eh, sako po ito sa lockdown. So paano nila masasabing na perfect na po ito, eh, ngayon po, eh, May 2020 pa lang. And another point, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, for purposes of a uh, parliamentary inquiry, uh, I would have wanted, Mr. Chair, that another bill that I filed, siguro po ito nakaligtaan ng, uh, nakaligtaan ng committee uh, secretariat uh, sa dami ng ginagawa nila. I would have wanted, Mr. Chair, and of course with your concurrence, that another bill that I filed, uh, Senate Bill 1460, uh, entitled an act expanding basic education curriculum and increasing the functions of the Bureau of Learning Delivery under the DepEd. Sana po nakasama na kasi it will, it will solve uh, most of the questions uh, we are now confronted with because this will call for the establishment of a Bureau of Distance Education and Learning Delivery. Uh, amending for that purpose the Education Act of 2013. Siguro po, uh, Mr. Chair, baka meron pa akong pagkakataon na susunod na hearing, eh, masama po ito kasi ito po yung sasagot doon sa mga katanungan nila, na uh, katanungan din natin, na paano po yung implementation ng distance education. So, uh, I'll allow the, the presenter to answer my question. Ano po ang status nito ng DepEd Commons uh, program? Uh, thank you very much. So, Senator Tolentino for the question. Yung pong DepEd Commons um, is being used by about 4 million plus users yung last pong pag-monitor namin. It's supposed to make available learning resources for the children involved in public school. Um, hindi pa po siya perfect kasi nga uh, once we are done with the self-learning modules we are developing right now, 
we will also upload uh, the resources uh, that in Commons. Aside from that, po, mayroon pa rin kaming repository of learning resources. We have a learning resource portal which has uh, other materials, mga teaching guides, etc. And uh, bibigyan po namin diin na uh, yun na online learning will just be an option. So hindi na pang po talaga lahat ng bata na wala namang internet access will be expected to ano, access the deaf and learning options. Baka po may gusto magdagdag from the deaf ed team, pwede po ang ano, magdagdag na siya. Um, Mr. Chairman. Yes, go ahead, uh, Yusek Tony. Uh, ma magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Doon po, Mr. Chair, sa tanong po ni uh, Senator Marcos, kung mayroon man pong pagbabago siguro na pwede pong gawin sa kasalukuyang Republic Act 7977, maaring ito po yung sumusunod. Una, baka pwede pong klaruhin, uh, Mr. Chair, kasi if we look at the present law, talks about a minimum of 200 school days and a maximum of 220 school days in the title of the law only. Pero pag tinignan na po yung katawan ng batas, uh, Mr. Chair, hindi po doon klaro, Mr. Chair, kung minimum nga po ba ang 200 pero nakalagay po sa katawan ng batas yung maximum na 220. Now, this will now pose a problem, Mr. Chair, to especially po lawyers applying the rules on statutory construction, whether if it is not stated in the body of the bill, but clearly there's an intent to put a minimum of 200 school days for our school calendar days. Point number two po, Mr. Chair, I have just spoken to our uh, team, uh, Mr. Chair, kung gusto po nating palawagin, uh, pala, pa, 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 pala, palawakin pa po, Mr. Chair, under the present law, we are given the discretion to make our school opening any day in June up to last day of last August. Baka pwede pong pahabu, pahabain siguro po hanggang Setyembre. Pero wag po nating ilagay kung anong buwan po talaga, Mr. Chair. Nabanggit po ng ating pong kagalang-galang na Senadora Marcos po, tama po yun, Marami pong pag-uusap na maaaring very inconvenient kapag June po natin ginagawa yung unang araw ng pasukan. Pero may mga pag-aaral na rin pong ginawa ang DepEd po dyan na maski po siguro Mr. Chair gawin pong August o September, eh maulan pa rin po yun Mr. Chair. And even based on studies, the strongest typhoons happen in the months of October, November, Typhoon Ondoy. And I don't know when was actually, and also Typhoon Haiyan or Yolanda po. So, November. Da dahil nga po sa tinatawag na climate change, Mr. Chair, baka po uh, mahihirapan po talaga tayo kung maghahanap po tayo talaga ng buwan na unang araw ng pasokan na gusto po nating tukuyin in, uh, conveniente sa mga bata. So, ang hinihiling po namin siguro, Mr. Chair, ay pwede po nating palawakin yung window period within which we could declare the opening of classes so that like na, right now, Mr. Chair, because of that window period, the Department of Education has decided to make August 24 as our uh, first day of classes. Kasi po, yung last Monday po, August 31, wala rin pong pasok yan. Baka po kung binigyan po kami hanggang September at uh, makikita po natin kung ano po yung sitwasyon, baka yun din po yung opsyon na amin pong kukunin. Babalik po uli ako dun sa unang araw ng pasokan, Mr. Chair. Alam po ninyo, Mr. Chair, meron din pong mga pag-aaral na ginawa ang ating kagawaran na ang konsepto po kasi, Mr. Chair, ng school calendar, maski po sa ibang bansa, nung sa bansang uh, sa Western countries, for, for example, they call their year school break as their summer vacation. Kasi gusto po nila, base sa pag-aaral, na kapag nagkaroon po ng bakasyon, yun po ay makabuluhan sa mga bata. May enjoy din po nila at meron pong quality bonding time na maaaring mangyari sa pamilya. Sa atin po natin, ang isa po sa lumalabas sa pag-aaral ay kaya po naging hunyo po yan, bukod po doon sa sinasabi nila, yan daw po yung uh, 
it has something to do with planting season no araw po but these are we have to vet this Mr. Chair pero ang summer vacation po talaga natin kasi Mr. Chair ay ang buwan ng Abril at Mayo at yan po Mr. Chair sabi po ng pag-asa dyan po na itatala ang pinakamainit na panahon kada taon and given that Mr. Chair kung magbubukas po tayo halimbawa ng pasukan at a much later month like August or September, what will happen here is we will have classes in April and May. And we would like to respectfully admit, Mr. Chair, that our classrooms are not designed, maski meron po po yung ventilador, maski po maganda po ang ventilasyon. Napakain po, Mr. Chair, at maaari pong hindi kaaya-aya ang pag-aaral sa mga bata at pag sinabi pong summer months, Mr. Chair, yan po ay aplikable sa buong Pilipinas. Unlike Mr. Chair, kapag maulan o may bagyo, maaaring inconveniente po sa Luzon, pero ma medyo kaaya-aya naman, makulimlim ang panahon sa Visayas at Mindanao. So if we talk about inconvenience on the part of our children in terms of deciding which month we will do our school opening, baka pag ginawa po natin yan, Mr. Chair, ng August, o ng iba pa pong buwan na later ng August, mahahagip ngayon ang April at May, yung issue of inconvenience will be applicable to all when in fact if we do it like still in June or July, aside from the fact that there should be theoretically more quality bonding vacation time for our children and the family during the months of April and May, panahon po ng piyesta, mahal na araw, uh, Flores de Mayo, Yan po ang nangyayari at sa mga probinsya ay maganda pong pagkakataon para magsama-sama ang pamilya. Ay kung may inconvenience man po pag panahon ng Hunyo, Mr. Chair, at may bagyong darating, yan po ay bahagi lamang ng ilang bahagi lamang ng ating bansa at yung ibang bahagi ng bansa ay maaaring maayos naman po. In other words, Mr. Chair, we have straight, uh, seriously considered all this, Mr. Chair, but uh, right now, Mr. Chair, just like what our USEC dads mentioned, uh, baka po kung may pagbabago man, to summarize, uh, palawakin yung window time, maybe June to September, Mr. Chair, at the discretion of our Deputy Secretary, paglilinaw po dun sa minimum uh, 200 to 220 days maximum. Pag nakita po yung batas, Mr. Chair, nag pumapalit-palit po sila in using last days school days. Thank you. Tapos na po kayo. Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Tapos na si Yusek Tony. Magre-react lang po. Yusek Tony, are you tapos na po kayo? Thank you po, Mr. Chair. Let's recognize Senator Francis first and then Senator Aimee. That would be okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, nabanggit na with the indulgence of Senator Marcos, panggit po ni Yusek uh, Tony kanina, yung tungkol sa 220 days, baka, baka hindi niyo po nabasa yung proposed bill ko, yung bill, Senate Bill 1458, ang nakalagay po doon, the Secretary may shorten the school calendar to less than 220 plus days. Yung po yung nakasaad, nakasaad po doon sa, sa, sa panukalang batas, at hindi lamang po ito para dito sa COVID-19 pandemic, kung ano pa man pong krisis ang kakaharapin ng ating bansa on a per region basis. So, uh, with all due respect, pakibasa po ito yung sa kumali itong Senate Bill 1458. Salamat po, Mr. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Yusek yes, Tony. At uh, ama po yun, handa-handa si uh, Senator Tol, pati si uh, SP, pati si Joel, na palitan natin yung batas to shorten. Or perhaps, as you suggested, sang-ayon rin ako, nabigyan natin ng sekretary ng flexibility na hindi lang ilengkan yung period, kundi bigyan siya ng uh, kapangyarihan na desisyonan. Ikalawa, gusto ko lang sabihin, baka naman, Baka naman, no? kasi binanggit na ni Yusek Tony yung kaibahan ng mga lugar sa Pilipinas. Ibig ko sabihin, this is a huge problem and there won't be any one-size-fits-all silver bullet solution. Ano kaya kung iba-iba ang uh, 
opening, depende sa lugar. Pwede ba yun or sobrang inconvenient? Ang kalalan po lang natin at uh, paglaruan, meron tayong mga school board. Andyan lahat ng pamilya, kasama dyan yung mga private and public school representatives. Kasama rin yung mga LGU na binanggit ninyo. At uh, um, provincial board, kada city council, may isang nakaata naka sa education. Baka pwede nilang desisyonan kung okay naman yung lugar at COVID-free. Ano ba naman mag-umpisa kahit ilang studyante lamang. At uh, talagang hirap na hirap po kami sa online learning. Talagang talos imposible mangyari. Baka naman po pwede sa ibang lugar magsibukas na yung iba naman hindi. At uh, diskusyonin yun ng school board at uh, ng mga city council. Lahat naman yan eh, uh, nandyan. At Tulong-tulong na lang tayo dyan para mag-start uh, up yung mga eskwela. Yun lang. Thank you very much, but I'm uh, in great favor. Mr. Yeah, Chairman. In favor of uh, yeah. Tony, Francis, uh, and uh, the Chair. Thank you. Yes, we recognize Senator Cayetano. Senator Pia was raising her hands earlier. And then Senator Joel after. Senator Pia? Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, my 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 questions and comments are not about the school opening, so I don't want to um, I don't want to lose the momentum because uh, Senator Marcos raised a very good point. Um, I need to leave though in ten minutes. So would would you like? Can we give the floor? Would you like to to have the other persons respond to that, or should I just post my questions and have it addressed later on? If for kind of indulgence, Senator Piaz, uh, Senator Joel also has some Yes, with the indulgence uh, of uh, Senator Pia, thank you very much. This is in uh, relation to uh, what Senator Aimi and Senator uh, Paul uh, has been talking about. I, I, I would like to join them and uh, reiterate again, uh, Mr. Chairman, that uh, in the uh, bill that we filed, 1452, we wanted to give flexibility to the uh, Department of Education. Uh, we didn't even mention uh, a particular date, uh, Mr. Chairman, because I think the basis should not be uh, on on uh, any survey or 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 or, or matali tayo. Kaya yun ang niya, Senator Ivy, na kailangan mag-open tayo ng ganitong date. Um, I'm also confused dun sa dalawang posisyon ng ating uh, resource person from DepEd sapagkat uh, sabi nung isa, uh, yun din ang talagang intention nila, mag-open ng klase sa Agusto. Yung isa naman, sabi, uh, tama, bigyan natin ng flexibility at uh, kapangyarihan ang Department of Education Secretary to to, uh, to, to decide based on uh, uh, empirical uh, data, yung recommendation ng uh, uh, interagency uh, task force. So, yun po yung nilalaman ng ating uh, paano ka ng batas dito sa Senate Bill Number 1452. Uh, now, with regard dun sa school days uh, na binabanggit kanina ni Yusek uh, Umali, uh, gusto ko lang ding i-point out no kasi uh, yung binabanggit na minimum number of school days for uh, basic education students, pag tinignan natin yung nangyari ngayon, uh, when classes were uh, suspended, if I'm not mistaken, from uh, March 10 uh, to April 3, hindi po ba, Yusef, uh, doon din po, nun sa, nun sa pag-suspend po na yun, hindi rin nakuha, hindi rin na, 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 na ipatupad yung sinasabi nating uh, minimum number of uh, uh, school days na tinatawag. Uh, Mr. Chair, with, with the permission of Mr. Go Chair, uh, uh, tama po yun, pag sinabi po nating uh, hindi rin po ba nakukuha yung uh, minimum number of school days, uh, whether it's 200 or up to 220 because of what happened uh, this uh, school year. In fact, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, with, with all honesty, hindi po talaga yan nakukuha dahil po, pag nakita naman po natin yung batas, nakalagay po doon uh, 200 to 220 uh, school days sa titulo and then uh, 
maximum of 220 days sa Section 1 or Section 2 ng RA 7977, inclusive of uh, class cancellations, maybe I'm not using the exact word used, but in so many words, class suspensions, class cancellations due to natural or man-made calamities. So, ang talaga pong nangyayari, uh, tulad po sa napakagandang punto po ni Senator Joel po natin, na uh, 203 school uh, calendar days po ang aming itinakda o maski mahigit pa po dyan. Pero dahil nga po sa kansilasyon na nangyayari, dahil po sa bagyo o mga strike na nangyayari uh, o kanumang pong mga uh, uh, dahilan, ay hindi po talaga uh, nakukuha yan na ibig sabihin po ay talagang mayroong physical, face-to-face -face contact time every year between 200 to 220 days. And the law recognizes that naman po. Uh, kapag uh, mayroon. Ang mahalaga, you start with a school calendar where there should be 200 to 220 school days in that school calendar. At yun po ang ginagawa ng ating pong kagawaran nito pong uh, mga nakaraang taon at hanggang sa kasalukuyan para po sumunod dyan. Paano po kami nakakasunod pa rin po, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, dito? Ay uh, kapag dumating na po doon sa punto na nakikita po namin na nakukompormisyo na po yung uh, mga modules na nais po namin ituro sa mga bata dahil nga po sa dami ng kansilasyon, meron po tayong klarong patakaran, Mr. Chair, a definite order guidelines on the conduct of uh, make-up classes during Saturdays o kaya po by way of extended school hours every day to compensate for those days that were lost due to this class suspension. Um, Mr. Chair, uh, uh, na, uh, amin pong uh, kinikilala yung uh, mga panukalang batas at uh, nung kanina po nagkomento po tayo at nagpapasalamat po tayo kay Senator Tolentino doon po sa kanya pong panukalang batas na nagbibigay nga po ng uh, kapangyarihan o uh, diskresyon sa ating pong kalihim. Uh, nung nagkomento po tayo, Mr. Chair, it was just a general comment, Mr. Chair, on what possible amendments that may be done to RA 7977. And we all uh, apologize. I apologize, Mr. Chair, if I fail to mention the measures that are already being considered right now that tries to address those concerns that I have mentioned. It was just a general comment, Mr. Chair, and we intend to submit a position paper on each measure, uh, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. If I may wind up, Mr. Chair, uh, thank you, uh, Yusuf Umali, for, uh, for uh, clarifying that because I have here with me the uh, uh, a, a study uh, data, for example, in 2012 to 2013, 200 uh, school days, 2013, 2014 to 2015, 201 up to 2016, actually. So, ang, ang main point po natin ay yung tinatawag na flexibility. Flexibility para hindi tayo matali kahit na may batas pa, kung hindi naman handa, kung hindi naman safe. Gamitin natin itong option na ito para siguruhin na safe ang ating mga estudyante, ang ating mga guro, ang nasa education sector. At the same time, masiguro natin na matututo rin yung ating mga kabataan. Binanggit kanina yung uh, different uh, uh, modalities. For example, if you go online, only one of uh, uh, five homes in the country are said to have internet access. Uh, with the majority of uh, unconnected homes belonging to the lower socioeconomic segments. So, uh, 80% of uh, public schools do not have internet access. If module-based, how many modules are already available? If actual classes, how do you plan to do this and still comply with social distancing? Siyempre, importante po yun. And last but not the least, uh, if I may, uh, uh, according to Bayanihan report uh, na, na ating natanggap, I'm sure si Senator Pia uh, is very much aware of this, 2,110 DepEd school facilities are currently being used as COVID-19 quarantine facilities. Now, should the use of these uh, facilities still be necessary later than uh, August 24, for instance? How does DepEd plan to cope up with this really? 
Uh, ito yung dahilan kung bakit natin uh, ifinail itong panukalang batas natin, itong uh, SB number 1452, para muli, uh, i-reiterate ko, bigyan ng flexibility ang DepEd, ang uh, interagency uh, task force para siguruhin na uh, by the time na i-announce natin itong start ng kase, ready na po tayo lahat. Maraming pong salamat, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Uh, we recognize Senator Pia and then uh, Attorney Erapmans to join in later on. Senator Pia. Yeah. Thank you, um, Mr. Chair. Um, I'd just like to bring up a few things. I need to step out from 10.30 to 11.30. So uh, my staff can listen to the responses or I can be back at 11.30. No rush, no. I just want to um, hear from the resource persons, of course, in particular DepEd, but from all the others representing... Um, private schools as well, that what have we been doing during this time lag no, that, the, that the classes were canceled? Because in many private schools that I know of, they continue to conduct classes online. Um, but these are private schools that, that have the budget, etc., um, have good internet connection. So I think DepEd was totally down, no? I mean, the, the public schools, from what I know, of course, there have been announcements to encourage students to learn, et cetera, et cetera. But that is ex exactly what we need to prepare for. So I'd like that we, I, I'd like to support um, the bill of um, Senator Tolentino, no? That uh, I, I actually, I'm not that familiar with it, but he mentioned it. Um, I'm also preparing a bill on um, uh, not just distance learning, but um, making use of multiple learning platforms and blended learning because we really will need to prepare for these kind of eventualities um all this time that we were we suffer you know whether it's days or weeks of no classes private schools including most especially international schools i understand have already been practicing distance learning precisely because of all the all, all of these classes that have been called off and I'd like to bring to light studies that show, these are studies abroad, no? I'm not sure if we've done our own studies, that very clearly, um, when children go back to school after two to two and a half months of a vacation, those children, those students who come from low-income families are always at a disadvantage because children from high-income families usually fill their children's schedule with summer activities be them um, supplementary academics, sports, uh, science classes. They're just filled with activities. And yet, low-income families that may come from single families, we discussed solo parenting yesterday, um, do not have access to this kind of activity. So that is the point that I want to make. What activities, whether they are partly very academically inclined or just you know um, encouraging reading at home, etc. What, what programs like that do we have in place? Now, all the way down to ensuring that it is implemented. Because we have to be prepared for this eventuality. And even if we follow an August schedule, and I do support um, exploring what Amy was saying about different uh, openings. But regardless, there will really be a big chunk that will open in August at the earliest. So what are they doing all this time? No, There has to be something in place. It was already mentioned that um, teachers will be back in June and they will be in training. So June is just two weeks away, no problem there. But what will the children be doing? Because most of them have not been doing anything for the last two weeks. And that's where we have to engage both the, not just the parents and the communities. No? Um, it really is a change of mindset. Um, as a working mom, hirap din ako, but I have to admit I have resources available to me, but a lot of parents don't. So those are the discussions we want to have. And I don't even mind, Mr. Chair, if it's in a different um, uh, hearing, no? I just want to be sure that everyone listening here is prepared to share th their uh, experiences, and especially those from the private schools who can also share with us um, lessons that can be picked up uh, in, in public schools as well. Thank you. Thank you, Senator P. And, and very good point. And I think uh, we're very well represented here uh, in this hearing. Um, Attorney Arab was raising his hand, and maybe he can also continue to discuss uh, the points that you mentioned. Attorney Era. Yes, uh, <clears throat> good, good morning, uh, uh, Mr. Chair and the members of the committee and uh, my fellow resource persons. Uh, Senator Wynne, I just would like to proceed uh, immediately to the impact of the COVID-19 to the, to the private education sector. Uh, as already mentioned by uh, DepEd, by USEC Dads, there are uh, 27 million learners 
And uh, for in the private sector, we account to 16% of the enrollment, total enrollment. That uh, accounts around 4 million students. And uh, we also have around uh, 300,000 uh, teachers, excluding uh, other school personnel. And so we are all affected also by this uh, national health emergency. So I just would like to enumerate, uh, Mr. Chair, the, uh, the immediate and uh, uh, urgent concerns of, of the private education sector also in, uh, in order of priority. Uh, first is, of course, the uh, health protocols, our ability to comply with the health protocols and guidelines, making sure our schools are safe and our ability to comply with social distancing requirements. So we're very conscious of that. And, uh, and next uh, in the priority, of course, is the continuity of learning. Once we are allowed to uh, to open our schools or train our faculty, this is our our prior, second priority, which is continuity of learning and also readiness of the parents. Uh, this area has not been highlighted, but I think in basic education, this is very important, the readiness of the parents. Because some parents are saying, regardless whether schools open in August, uh, a lot of them are, are still uh, adamant in sending their kids back to school. Third priority is uh, the continuity also of our work for our school personnel, both the teaching and non-teaching personnel. A lot of them are, are now on no work, no pay, and a lot of them are also waiting for, for assistance from the government. And number four, the last of our priority, but of course is also very important, is the viability, making sure that our educational institutions are viable so that uh, we may continue our operations post-COVID. Uh, now, uh, I'd like to uh, uh, point some very some uh, specific matters on the items that I've mentioned. Um, on the continuity of learning and the continuity of work for our school personnel, uh, to also address the uh, the race uh, the, the points raised by Senator Pia, uh, we are we are doing our preparations. Um, with, with the limitations on the reporting of our school personnel. We're supposed to send our school personnel uh, on May 18, starting May 18, but the, the ECQ was extended in some areas, including the NCR. We'll have to hold that off, but we're trying uh, our best to, uh, to have our trainings uh, without the need of reporting to, to, the, uh, to the campus, to the campuses. But we're also concerned about uh, skeletal workforce uh, in our schools uh, which, who are performing essential functions. Yung pong mga nasa accounting sana, yung mga uh, doing preparations, uh, if they may be allowed because in the IATF resolution, hindi po yun nailagay. Um, and also, uh, on behalf of the school personnel, we're, we're waiting po sana ng direct uh, support for them. Uh, direct subsidy for them uh, directly to our school personnel, particularly our teachers. And just would like also to inform the committee that uh, uh, most, if not all, schools were not able to get the assistance from the DOLE camp. And, uh, based on, and also from the DOF, the DOF also said that uh, the education sector is not included in the, uh, in the sectors that are qualified to receive the uh, small business uh, wage subsidy. So, sa ngayon po, wala po talagang uh, uh, nakukuhang direct subsidy po yung ating mga teachers and school personnel and they are really affected also by, by uh, uh, this uh, pandemic. And uh, yun pong sa, ano, I just proceed na rin po, sa, ano, para isa na lang, if, if it's okay, I'll proceed directly to the, to the school calendar. Uh, I've heard the, the, the points already raised by the members of the uh, Department of Education. This is not the first time that this issue has been, the, has been uh, proposed or raised. Uh, but in the past, uh, DEPED has always maintained that uh, there's no need to change the school calendar and the proposals were actually made in higher education. But I think this time, because of the emergency, uh, this issue has uh, again been opened. But uh, for us in the private sector, we're open to, uh, to, to exploring uh, a review of the law, RA 7797, because this is a very old law, 25 years now. But uh, I think uh, unless we have uh, a very clear uh, direction uh, and, and very clear uh, uh, reasons to, to move uh, from, the, uh, from the provisions of the law, 
we would we prefer that it would be status quo uh, for for two reasons no? the, the law provides uh, should provide both uh, flexibility and stability not only flexibility but it should be stable no so for synchronization of uh, of the school calendar uh, for the mobility of students no students moving to and from the public school system and also synchronization of school calendar for those uh, moving from basic education to the higher education institutions kaya po yung june to august uh, sa ngayon is uh, okay pa actually i think this is the first time that uh, school opening will be done in august pero yun ang kumbaga yun na yung maximum and i think if we move it further to september baka po maapektuhan na talaga yung synchronization why because a school year is uh, usually 10 months no, so, for example, if a school opens in June, for example, a private school opens in June, and the DepEd or other schools open in September, the September opening will end in June. So, magkakaroon po ng problem doon, and uh, lalo na sa higher education. Pero in higher education po, I think uh, it has already been clarified. Okay na po. It's more flexible in higher ed because after basic ed, diretso ka naman na sa higher ed. But I think it's a different... Uh, matter when it comes to basic ed. So, yun po ang concern namin, uh, synchronization, but also uh, less disruptions. As already uh, mentioned earlier, hindi po naman po natin talaga ma-determine at ano po ba yung buwan na talagang will, be, will, will have uh, less uh, disruptions. Eh, Pa-iba-iba pa, pa rin po yung ating uh, schedule ng typhoons. Eh. The major typhoons actually happened between September to November yung milenyo, etc. Nangyari po yan ng September up to November. So it's really very hard to move if we will base it on the typhoons. So yun po ang concern namin. But I'd like to add another point. If we would like to really uh, move, uh, uh, change, the, uh, change the policy direction. Because I think now, based on what we have under the law, we have enough flexibility for DepEd to have some administrative adjustments. And I, th I think uh, it would, it's unlikely that a law can answer for, for all uh, circumstances and eventualities. But just talking about class days, uh, I think we have enough flexibility for RA 7797. But if we're moving towards a different policy direction, like for example, if we don't consider days, class days anymore, hindi ko alam kung relevant pa yung class days now with the flexible learning options, or should we also look at learning time, not necessarily days? You know, with the, the, with the numerous uh, uh, class shifts uh, sa public school system, tapos iba-iba rin po yung ating learning time sa private schools uh, or, or days, yung hours natin no, in a day. Um, I'm not sure if, uh, if uh, it's also uh, better if we look into learning time rather than, rather than class days. Kasi yung class days, meron pa yung second level, which is yung uh, curricular class days. Meron mga class uh, uh, school activities lang uh, pero pumapasok yung mga bata and uh, setting it to 200 to 220 tama po yun hindi naman po yan nasusunod talaga every year because of the disruptions man made and uh, and uh, natural calamities uh, including holidays etc inclusive na po yun so i don't think nasusunod po yun eh but but i think uh, what is more important is the learning areas learning time and uh, um, I don't know if uh, a law is necessary, but definitely this is something that our DepEd uh, can, uh, can address uh, moving forward, especially with our migration to the, uh, to the flexible learning uh, options. And, and lastly, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, I just would like to, uh, to point out that uh, aside from the uh, um, changing of mindsets and upgrading our technology, I think we should also um, ensure the readiness of our parents, specifically for basic education. And like to go back to the principle enunciated by our constitution, that education is the primary duty of the parents, and it is merely delegated to the state and the educational institutions. So kasi po ngayon, I think uh, even with the uh, technology, whether online or offline, the schools will just provide the learning materials and instructions, but the actual uh, facilitation of learning will be at home and with the parents. So I'm receiving a lot of concerns, but it's more on the parents. And uh, um, for some schools, regardless of our preparation, if the parents are not ready, this will all fail. The, the flexible learning options will fail. And so um, we'd also like to, uh, to, uh, to 
have that and, and to raise that, uh, particularly on the needs of the parents. Uh, hindi lang po sa interconnectivity, but I think yung pong uh, kanilang uh, yung, yung uh, openness nila no, to move towards these flexible learning options and also training probably uh, for very specific uh, platforms in uh, in the learning and delivery system. So yun lang po, uh, Mr. Chair, and thank you. Thank you. Maraming salamat. Thank you, Attorney Arap. Uh, we recognize Chair? Senator Binay. Yes, Senator Nancy. Uh, siguro, i-ano ka lang kay Attorney Arap uh, as a parent of uh, uh, twins na 10 years old. Talaga nakaka-relate ko na, dun sa sinabi niya na parang Sa panahon ngayon, mukhang yung magulang ang kailangan bumalik sa school eh. I mean, <laughs> di ba, at this, I'm what, I turned 47 the other day, hindi ko na matatandaan yung mga <laughs> angles, mga fractions, di ba? But I guess, dahil nga dun sa sitwasyon natin, parang kailangan din ng kumaga retraining ng mga magulang. But uh, just to share my experience as a parent, uh, but um, going to my question, um, kung matatanda ni Attorney Erap and uh, Senator Sherwin, if you remember, during our last hearing, I think March 11 yun, uh, na bring up na na marami ng challenges ang mga private schools. Tapos nagkaroon pa tayo ng ganitong problema itong COVID-19. Um, kasi hindi na pag-uusapan uh, yung mga pangangailangan ngayon ng private schools na assistance. Because I'm sure they will need additional investments kasi yung layout na lang ng classroom ngayon, mababago na, di ba? Yung, yung classroom size, that's one. And then another one, even before COVID, bumababa na daw ang, um, ano ba yan, yung nag -e enroll sa mga private schools kasi lahat sila lumilipat na ngayon sa public school. So isa pang magiging problema ngayon yan dahil alam natin marami tayong mga kababayan na mawawala ng trabaho dahil dito sa COVID-19. So, gusto ko lang itanong kay Atty. Erap, may napag-usapan na ba ng mga private schools kung ano yung mga uh, package na pwede nyong hingin sa pamahalaan? Katulad ng nabanggit nyo, hindi pala kayo kasama dun sa uh, dolly assistance. Meron pa ba kayo nakikita in terms of uh, assistance na pwede naming uh, gawin para sa mga private schools? Uh Thank you, Senator Nancy, for bringing this up. Actually, napapagod na nga ako kami. Siguro lahat po ng office and offices, lahat na po ay pinuntahan ko na IATF, DOF, NEDA. And we have a list of our uh, our uh, requests. At uh, dun po sa aming uh, mga requests, ang aming pong priority talaga yung diretso na sa school personnel. Kasi malaking bagay po yun eh. Because in our operations of the school, 70% of our costs is already on the uh, on the school personnel. So, yun nga pong hinihiling namin, diretso na po dun sa mga school personnel because we're absorbing their salaries since March and no work, no pay, no tuition collection. And uh, it will be a big help for us if there will be a, a, a salary subsidy for them. Kahit nga po yung amount is fixed or similar to what has been already granted to other uh, employees, yung uh, I think the range of 5 to 8,000, Malaking bagay na po yun. Pangalwa, yung training po, diretso na rin sa kanila. Uh, training, subsidy, and also uh, uh, assistance for uh, for mobile data packages, uh, acquisition of equipment, uh, para po maihanda sila. Uh, and of course, yung po sa ating mga assistance din sa mga students and families, so that uh, education cost will be included in their whatever economic stimulus package po na may bibigay because it also uh, gives them the ability to enroll their children to the private schools. Uh, ayaw naman po namin maging presumptive na sabihin eh, bayaran po ng gobyerno yung aming foregone or projected losses in tuition dahil hanggat hindi po sila nakakapag-enroll sa amin, I don't think we can claim vested right on this tuition. No? So, sa amin po talaga, uh, sa ngayon, meron pong land bank loan. Uh, I think for some schools, uh, that is also... Uh, uh, a good uh, a help, no? Pero may mga iba naman, they, they can't even uh, already afford loan payments. So I think they also belong to a different category who need uh, go needs government help. So sa ngayon po, yun po yung mga immediate namin or uh, siguro po yung mga um, just to expedite yung for release uh, na government subsidy na nandyan na po sana like the teacher salary subsidy for our teachers 
uh, hinihintay na rin po yan uh, ng mga private school teachers natin. This is already due, even I think even prior to the uh, lockdown in ECQ. So yan po yung mga, mga nandyan na malapit na, pwede naman na po sigurong ano, hindi na kailangan mag-isip ng bago. And uh, just uh, yun pong aming plea sana, kung pwedeng maisama na po yung ating school personnel to so whatever economic package or social amelioration package that uh, we may extend to those affected by this uh, pandemic. Yun lang po yung hiling namin sa kayo. Nats, you're nakamute ka, Nats. Can you submit to the committee a copy yung mga letters na sinend nyo sa IATF? Kasi baka we can also include this dun sa uh, as part of the function of the oversight committee ng Bayanihan Act. Yun lang, Mr. Chair. Yeah, we'll do, uh, Senator Nancy. In fact, I stand corrected. No? I was talking to uh, Ms. Caroline Enriquez. I always thought na ang private school kasali sa CAMP or SBWS. And then uh, when I looked at the list of industries, hindi pala kasama. So uh, uh, rest assured that uh, we will communicate with DOF. DOF kasi nagmamanage nito and see uh, what is the reason why uh, private schools are left out. No, uh, Considering that they are... Um, partners in delivering education. Siguro, Senator Shorin, just one more question. Kay yes, Atari go Garap. ahead. Yeah. Na, Napag-aralan niyo na ba kung um, ilang percent yung magkakaroon ng ano, school drop-out? I mean, yung hindi mag-enroll sa inyo ngayon dahil nga, dahil dun sa epekto ng COVID-19. Dahil alam naman natin, well, number one, may problema tayo ngayon sa mga OFWs kasi, uh, since uh, global nga itong problema na to, may projection na marami tayong mga kapabayan na mawawalan ng trabaho abroad. Which means, mawawalan sila ng capacity to pay for private schools. May ganong pag-aaral na ba kayo ngayon? Because syempre kailangan paghandaan din ito ng pet ed eh. Kasi merong may segment ng mga estudyante na madidisplace, di ba? Yeah, uh, Senator, uh, I hope I can directly answer uh, Senator Wynn. Uh, yes, go ahead. Go ahead, uh, Attorney. Uh, Senator Nancy, we had our survey, actually still an ongoing survey with our members, and uh, we're anticipating the uh, decline in enrollment between 25% to 50%. Uh, I think uh, tataas pa yan uh, in, in the coming days, but uh, when we did this survey with our own members, mga nasa ganun na po, hanggang 50%. Because even prior to the, the pandemic, the steady decline uh, already reached 25% po yan, a year in, year out, because of a lot of factors na rin. But uh, we're anticipating more, around 50%. Will not be so able to enroll. Yeah. Attorney Arap, ilan yung 50%? Um, Hina ako sa math eh. So more or less ilang number yeah, kung, of students. 2.5. Uh, kung buong uh, basic education po, nasa ano yan? nasa around 2 million ang, ang 2%. No? Kasi 4 million po ang aming estudyante from elementary to senior high. Pero ang breakdown po niyan, 9% lang sa elementary, 20% sa junior high, and 46% in senior high. So, hindi ko lang sure kung saan doon ng uh, malaking ano. But uh, if we're talking about 50% sector-wide, then that would be 2 million students we're talking about. Um, Senator Win, anybody from the DepEd family Kung meron na ba silang uh, paghahanda na ginagawa para dito sa uh, 2 million, potential 2 million na mga kabataan na hindi na kayang mag-enroll sa private schools. Because I assume lahat yan nilipat sa public schools. Are we ready for that? Uh, Ma'am? Yes, go ahead, Yusek. Yes, uh, go ahead po. No, this is Yusek Jess po. Uh, Yusek Jess, can you ano, pakibukas po yung uh, video niyo? Yeah, okay. Uh, so that we can see your uh, your, yeah, you. your handsome uh, face. Ah, okay. <laughs> Thank you po. Anyway, uh, on the point of, first on the point of uh, Kwan, uh, Attorney Estrada, we continue to process uh, yung uh, TSS na sinasabi niya, teacher salary subsidy. In fact, uh, almost every day nga kami nila Yusek and we've been signing uh, hundreds of millions of pesos for the uh, GASPE ESC voucher, uh, a substantial amount of which is uh, already uh, processed and um, uh, paid to the uh, schools. No? May hinihintay lang kami mga ipadokumento na sinasubmit pa ng mga 
uh, schools natin kasi ang sistema po, mga galing sa school, aakyat po yan sa region, and the region to pay up, pay up to DepEd. At the point po pa, Juan, yung uh, kay Senator uh, Nancy po, kung may pag-aaral po, kung maalala nyo, annually, meron kaming kinukundak na early enrollment. Uh, so, itong June po, na nakalagay po sa aming uh, school calendar na kapipirma pa lang ni Secretary uh, Yuling Briones, magkukundak ulit kami ng uh, enrollment uh, validation to estimate nga how many of those kids will go to our school so that we can anticipate already the requirement na uh, needed for all those children po. And also, we are part, uh, anticipating nga dahil dito sa challenges nito, definitely ang mga bata sa private school will mi either migrate to public schools or will totally drop out. And then we've been discussing that. Eh. How do we ensure that children will continue to learn even uh, if they're uh, at home? No? Ang isa pong tinitignan namin sa tulong po ng aming uh, USEC uh, Tony Umali who's in charge of external partnership. Uh, kung paano po na namin itatap yung mga Federation of Parent Teachers uh, Association kasi po magbabago ang... Uh, ang role ng ating mga magulang, mas lalo na sa ganitong sitwasyon. Uh, on top of that, yung amin pong uh, LCP na diniscuss po ni Yusek Tony, uh, Yusek uh, Dads, already accounts for those uh, uh, eventualities po. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair. Salamat po, uh, Ma'am uh, Senator Nancy. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, uh, you suggest. Um, we're also joined by a member of IATA, si Dr. Kabotahe. And uh, I, I want to ask, no, because this was raised by Senator uh, Marcos and Senator Tolentino, um, our school opening, Dr. Kabotahe, is August 24. And uh, we've been reading a lot of what we call the second wave. No? Meron sa Korea, meron sa Singapore. And uh, are we confident, uh, of course, this is a, a very uh, difficult question to ask, but how are we, uh, how confident are we that uh, by August 24, we can guarantee the safety of our students, parents, and teachers uh, when the school uh, opens in light of what we are seeing around the world in, uh, when, uh, around the world in regards to the second wave or potential re-emergence of the virus. Dr. Kabotahe? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes. Uh, there is really no guarantee uh, if there is no second wave. What we can, what we can only do is uh, to make all the uh, precautions uh, in place and then uh, uh, most importantly, surveillance. I think this is the most important, to look at every possibility that there is an infection. We follow the uh, regular protocol. This has been mentioned by our private school uh, and everybody. The first is really health protocols. Uh, an ounce of prevention, we go back, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. Uh, really emphasizing to, this, uh, to the parents, the teachers, and the children that they need to abide by these protocols. Uh, we are also stepping up our capacity for uh, the health, health uh, sector. Although as we know, we are now having challenges for our laboratory testing because of uh, uh, unavailability of some uh, testing uh, supplies. Uh, all of this, there is shortage all over the world. Uh, we are, they may need later the PPEs, uh, the uh, personal protective uh, equipment uh, based on the risk that is uh, available. So uh, the new normal will include no more, uh, always use a face mask. If the child is sick, do not send to school. I, I think these are the uh, safeguards, but uh, as far as the projections, we cannot uh, really say. We just need to be on guard. But doctor, of course, it, from, from a layman point of view, no? Kasi, first of all, di naman kami, di naman ako doctor, no? And, uh, but we get a lot of questions from parents. Safe na ba, no? Uh, by August 24. 
And uh, from, I know IATAF has very sophisticated uh, models and simulations. From, from your epidemiology uh, studies, as well as yung capability ng country natin, no? tumataas in testing, dumadami na yung laboratories, do you think by August 24, are we confident uh, to say that uh, it's safe to open the schools on August 24? Looking at all the, the, the capability as well as the epidemiology trends, pwede ba natin masabi sa ating mga magulang on August 24, uh, safe na tayo? Magbukas ng klase? Based on the current trend, sir, that uh, there is bending and uh, gradual flattening of the curve, uh, we will be ready to open by August uh, uh, 24. Uh, but, uh, and also, uh, what we call uh, intense surveillance. Uh, from now up to August 24, we will need to look at where the outbreaks are occurring and then uh, really implement uh, what we call the, you isolate them, you trace their contacts so that they don't spread. I think if we uh, implement all these uh, measures, we will be ready for uh, August 24. Uh, this is the reason why uh, the IATF has extended, uh, instead of just a low risk, they now went into uh, modif uh, uh, community, uh, general community quarantine instead of uh, uh, immediate uh, opening up so that we can see what's going to happen from May, from May 15 to May 31. So th these are the adjustments that we are going to make. Thanks, because sir. August 24 is three months from now. Eh? And uh, we're doing all of these things to bend the curve, and hopefully by August 24, uh, everything is controllable already. So um, uh, that's what, uh, in simple terms, what we want to uh, be able to answer our parents and, and teachers that by August 24, uh, safe na ang ating mga uh, sa pagbubukas. Officer, the different uh, agencies do their do their part uh, in trying to put uh, systems in place. Ito po yung tinatawag natin buying time during the general community quarantine so that we can put uh, systems uh, in place. Okay. Thank you, sir. Senator Thank Nancy. Uh, uh, kay Yusek Mir na lang, meron mo ba tayong parang blue book na kung saan talaga nakasulat doon Na kunyari, ah, dapat ang classroom size, ganito lang. Ang distance ng mga upuan, ganito. Si teacher, kailangan naka-face mask. Kailangan yung mga estudyante, ganito na yung bahagi ng uniform. Meron na ho ba tayong ginagawang parang ganitong blue book? Uh, thank you, Madam Senator. Uh, in terms of the more detailed, wala pa. Yung mga general uh, guidelines, meron na po. But we are working... Uh, and I'm sure that Fred will uh, guarantee that they're already looking at ano ba yung one meter distance, magmamark ng mga chair. Uh, they will all use the uh, at least a uh, face mask, not necessarily a surgical uh, face mask. Uh, tapos magkaroon ka ng mga washing facilities. Dati naman yung ini-emphasize sa mga school, di ba? Yung uh, uh, hand washing with... Uh, water, tapos ang lalagay, hand now, uh, soap and water. Tapos yung maglalagay na ho tayo ng mga food bats. Uh, uh, maybe this is a, these are the things that we need to manualize. Tama ho kayo? Dapat yun, saka blue book. Opo. Yun na nga yung seke, kasi parang ngayon, lalong lalo na ang daming kumakalat na fake news, di ba? Kaya napakahalaga na meron talagang isang parang uh, blue book or manual na kung saan Katulad ko, bilang isang magulang, alam ko na pwede kong i-access ito either sa DepEd or sa DOH na kailangan ganito yung protocol na susundin ng skwelahan ng anak ko. But kasi kung walang-walang ganong written na dokumento, parang ang hirap kumuha ng information as, as a parent. And siguro maganda, baka pwede upuan ng DepEd, ng DOH, pati ng mga private school owners and other um, kumbaga... Uh, malalaman natin kung ano na nga ba talaga yung magiging new norm or 
protocol pagdating sa edukasyon ng ating mga kabataan. Mr. Chair? Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Yung, Chair? Yes, Yusek Kamali, and then... Uh, sino from, yung... Flora. Flora. Yeah, Yusek Yes, use a Kumali first and then use a uh, and then yes, the sensory dadagdag ko lang din kasi magiging bahagi din ng ba ng protocol na yung mga teachers natin ay asu dapat kailangan magkaroon sila ng testing, 'di ba? Bago uh, magsimula ang uh, ang pagpasok. And then ano pa yung protocol pag kunyari may isang teacher na nagkaroon ng symptoms or may isang estudyante na nagkaroon ng symptoms, ano yung, I mean, yung mga, I mean, the devil is in the details, but, I mean, we have to start doing the, those details. Okay. I think you, you see, uh, Center Nancy raised a good point about testing, no? And uh, I know for a fact, the private corporations are doing their own uh, testing before they allow their workers to come in. And uh, uh, someone from DepEd should answer that. Uh, yes. Let yes, me recognize you, Sek. Yusek, uh, let me recognize Yusek Komali, then Ma'am Flora, and then Yusek Jess. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, Yusek Cody here from DepEd. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, our Secretary Liling Briones emphasized, Mr. Chair, uh, even in our learning continuity plan and even in the DepEd order on the school calendar, that while we set August 24, as the first day of school opening for public schools, we emphasize, Mr. Chair, that this does not necessarily mean physical, face-to-face -face, uh, contact or learning in our schools, Mr. Chair. Meron po tayong mga klarong guidelines and protocols that each public school should satisfy, assuming that the present, in accordance with the present Executive Order Number 112, as uh, uh, amended uh, or, or as uh, supplemented by a subsequent uh, issuance on the current ECQ GCQ situation. Kung may pagpapahintulot talimbawa po sa isang lugar, Mr. Chair, na wala na pong ECQ or GCQ, maski August 24 po ang tinakda natin pong unang araw ng pasok. At kung hindi pa po handa at hindi po nasatisfy ng paaralan yung klarong guidelines and protocol, minimum health standards, that we expect each of our private, uh, public school to apply and adopt, hindi po sila pwedeng mag-physical face-to-face. So siguro yun po yung unang punto, Mr. Chair. And in the same DepEd order on uh, private schools naman po, Mr. Chair, while we allow them to open any day from June to August as allowed by RA 7977, they cannot hold face-to-face -face classes, uh, Mr. Chair. Our mom Lily exercised her power to reasonably supervise private school as mandated by the Constitution and by existing laws on this matter. Kaya hindi po sila pwede mag-physical face-to-face until August 24. At Mr. Chair, meron pa rin pong kondisyon katulad po sa ating mga pampublikong paaralan. Kailangan po nilang magsumite ng kanilang mga undertakings at uh, pagbibigay ng impormasyon sa DepEd at malaya pong i-check po ito ng ating mga regional directors if they have also adopted the minimum health standards, protocols, precautionary measures uh, issued by all relevant government agencies. At uh, yun po yung ating uh, polisiya po doon, uh, Mr. Chair. So siguro po, Mr. Chair, talagang gusto po nating idiin sa ating pong mga na kasamahan dito po sa Senate hearing na po ito at mga magulang na ang kalusugan, ang proteksyon ng mga mag-aaral, pati po ng ating mga kaguruan, we will have guidelines on what we meant by our school teachers now through social distance, uh, through uh, distant uh, learning, how this will all be done, Mr. Chair. Meron po tayong ibababang uh, mga uh, guidelines po dyan. Mr. Chair, very quickly, Mr. Chair, on uh, issues raised by private school, kasi baka mahalaga po ma mabanggit po yung suporta na binigay po ng ating kalihim, uh, Leonor Briones, dun po sa pagbibigay po ng ayuda sa mga displaced private school teachers. Uh, itinutulak po yan ng ating ma'am Liling Briones. Uh, kaya lamang po sa ngayon, bukod po sa alam po nating lahat na limitado na po yung pondo, kailangan po namin ng datos kung ilan po 
yung displaced private school teachers. Yung nababanggit po kanina ng ating pong resource person, Mr. Chair, ang dami po niyan kung ating pong bibilangin lahat, uh, kung basic education po lamang, ay nasa 300,170 teaching, teaching related and non-teaching personnel. If we multiply that by, by 8,000 pesos, nasa idea na si person po tayo at bigyan po natin ng ayuda ang lahat, nasa humigit kumuna 2.4 billion pesos ang ating pinag-uusapan. Pero Mr. Chair, maski natin makuha yung ideal, yun nga pong sinusulong po ng ating mamliling Briones kung mabigyan lamang po tayo ng tamang datos kung ilan po yung displaced teachers dito. Dahil hindi naman po lahat, Mr. Chair, ng mga kawani na nabanggit po pong bilang, ay wala pong sweldo na nakukuha. Ang mga hindi lamang pong nakakakuha dyan ng sweldo, Mr. Chair, ay yung mga non-permanent employees po nila, yung contractual employees na no work, no pay, maybe even teaching or uh, non-teaching personnel. At yun naman po, Mr. Chair, ang atin pong tinututukan at kung mabibigyan po tayo ng datos po dyan, we have been coordinating with various organizations, Mr. Chair, private school organizations, and we will take it from there, Mr. Chair. So, yun po yung uh, klaro po dyan. Bukod po doon sa nabanggit, Mr. Chair, alam niyo po yung land bank initiative, Mr. Chair, that's 0% interest loan for students na pang ayuda po sa kanila sa kanila pong pang matrikula. 3% per annum interest for private schools. Uh, yan po yung ilang mga mga initiative po ng ating uh, pamalan at aming pong uh, pinapasalamatan ang land bank po dyan. Salamat po, Mr. Chair. Thank you. We recognize Senator Francis. Battery ko. So, dalawa lang po siguro sa DepEd. I'm sure uh, they've heard me before. Nag-advider na rin ako sa iyo, Jose Kumali. Meron kayong Bureau of Learning Delivery. Uh, meron din po kayong Bureau of Learning Resources. Siguro po, uh, policy suggestions. Dapat po ito yung mga kumikilos ngayon. Uh, kabilang po doon sa ginagawa nyo. I understand that you have an ongoing ongoing uh, survey which you started April 18. Ikaw alam po natapos yun na to. Survey conducted by DepEd related to the COVID situation. So paano nyo masasabing naihanda nyo na eh, ongoing pa ito? You have to answer that. And lastly, Mr. Chair, kanina natanong ko yung presence ng PPD4. Uh, ang best practices po ngayon sa China, they, they started an all-day TV broadcast tungkol sa mga lesson sa math, language, uh, and physical education. The same is true with Sinila, uh, Kenya Broadcasting. Sila on how to uh, provide distance uh, education. Finland and Ukraine. Matanong ko po, wala dito po ang PPP for dun sa ETH. How are we uh, helping DepEd and PTB4 uh, relative to this uh, distance education modules? Uh, NPC representative, are, yeah. you, are you listening? Si Deputy Commissioner Cabarios, DEPCOM. Po, yes, 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 sir. Yes, uh, uh, please answer the query of uh, Senator Tolentino. Ang uh, tanong ko po, para ma maulit ko, paano niyo po inaalalayan ang PTB4 na makatulong sa DepEd na mag-provide ng uh, distance education. Kasi hindi naman po lahat naka-laptop, hindi lahat po naka-computer sa probinsya. Uh, paano po niyo mas maalalayan? Will be issuing a circular? Will you be issuing a memorandum uh, tungkol po dito? Or hindi pa kayo nag-uusap ng DepEd? Uh, tungkol po sa uh, PTB4, um, Meron po silang they are now um, broadcasting uh, using digital uh, ISDBT and uh, yung 6 megahertz uh, channel po nila eh, they can have around 6 programs and one of the programs may be distance learning so pwede po nilang gawin yun. the only problem po siguro is uh, 
the households should be provided with with the uh, setup boxes, which is around uh, between 500 to 1,000 pesos per uh, television set. So yun lang po siguro uh, ang magagawa so far because uh, we believe that PTV4 is expanding its uh, digital uh, TV broadcast po. Uh, Engineer Bar Cabarios, hindi lang siguro po sa individual household, siguro pwedeng gawin ng mga schools uh, yung kanilang mga gymnasiums, meron po television doon para doon na lang po ipunin, uh, observing social distances, yung ilan nating mga estudyante, learners, para sa ganun, ma mar maramihan na agad yung pag-deliver ng, ng information sa ating mga estudyante. Yun po siguro yung uh, kinakailangan ngayon. But, but have you sat down with DepEd and PT before on how this can be accomplished? Uh, so far, uh, hindi pa po, no? Uh, but uh, we will uh, uh, request our broadcast uh, division to uh, work out for uh, uh, a meeting with DepEd at, at uh, PT before. Salamat kasi ito po siguro yung patutunguhan natin. Salamat po, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Dep Depcom, in light with that, no, uh, alam ko ho na sa mga franchises na mga television, radio, meron naka-allocate for public service. Apo. Can, we, uh, can DepEd trigger that? Yes, they, they, they are uh, mandated by their respective authorizations po to uh, allocate uh, one hour per day of government use or 30 hours or per month of government use. Okay. Doon sa children's uh, uh, television law, no? it was nakasulat doon 15% of airtime. Can that be used? Uh, I'm not quite sure, but if it is a law, they have to comply with the law. You're not familiar with that law? Yes, yes. Bakit tingin niya ho yung television, children's television law, in which nakasulat doon 15% of their airtime should be allocated to education. So, bakit tingin na lang ho yan? But at the minimum, what you mentioned earlier is one hour per day. And this is across all television and radio. Uh, yes, so yung kanila, the, the one hour uh, per day ho, is required under the respective authorizations. So, uh, so lato ng kanilang facilities. Yes. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Miss, Miss Flora, you also want to comment? Sir, uh, am I? Okay. Um, Go ahead, Paul. The issue of access and equitable education is more challenging for us now and even after the ECQ that may bring and bring a new normal lifestyle like social distancing, face masks, and frequent washing at hands. Now the issue is how the marginalized, excluded, and vulnerable learners adapt to high technology learning if there is no internet connection or electricity. Frequent hand washing if there is shortage of water in schools and in their houses. Physical distancing in home-based school since most of the houses of urban poor learners are, are, are too small with 15 square meters with an average of five members. And how would the well-being of teachers be addressed? Would the learning modes lessen and increase their workload? Now the attention of the government and the public is on the students affected by the formal schooling. Yet the pandemic also affected the 3.8 million Filipinos aged 6 to 24 years old who are out of school, children, and youth, and 12.8 million Filipinos aged 31 to 59 years old who have not completed their basic education. That is 2016 AP survey. But with the pandemic COVID crisis, we are anticipating a decline in enrollment, especially in the private schools, um, 
about 2 billion, more or less 2 billion. And even in the public schools, no, we are also anticipating dropouts no, of more learners. Now, this is where the alternative learning systems no, um, would come in. But then the ALS budget remained to be 500 million pesos no, annually. And the budget for the IPs, indigenous peoples, education did not increase and remained to be 100 million. And then the learners with disabilities, the most vulnerable sector is only 0.44% of the annual budget of the DepEd. Now, it is in this context that we would like to put forward our recommendations, especially, come on, Maya, on legislation, sir. Uh, we would like to expedite the legislation, the passing of the alternative learning system and the inclusive education for learners with disabilities into laws. And then secondly, we want to revisit and scan the existing laws such as RA 10821, <clears throat> Children's Emergency Relief and Protection Act, and RA 10121, Philippine Disaster Risk Reduction Management, and that mean <clears throat> how would this aid in education in the new normal. Now we would like to ensure equitable financing on education in emergency situation, especially for the marginalized, excluded, and vulnerable sectors of the society, whether arising for COVID pandemic, disaster, or armed conflict. And this should be covered by the uh, new law that we're discussing right now. And then uh, next, <clears throat> on ensuring health and wellness of education frontliners and learners. Definitely the teachers are also frontliners. Um, specifically on the teachers, we want to conduct mass testing to all teachers and school leaders since they are the frontliners in this situation. Conduct also psychosocial, psycho-emotional online sessions with the teachers to prepare them for teaching in this new normal. A hygiene kits to teachers during face-to-face -face sessions in school and home and or community visits to learners, uh, including masks, eyeglasses, and alcohol, and so on. And then monthly medical checkup for teachers as preventive measure and for keeping them well. And providing also hazard and hardship pay. Now on the issues of private school teachers, Actually, we recommend and we assisted our private school teachers members to access the camp and the tupad from Dole. We link them up, but at this point, they haven't received it yet. And even in the public uh, schools, no? for example, uh, the contractual teachers, uh, they... <clears throat> No work, no pay. So we encourage them and lead them to the social amelioration pay. Yeah. And then on the learners, uh, providing hygiene kits to learners during face-to-face -face sessions in school and group sessions in the community. Provision of feeding program to all children in public schools whether they are in school or at home study, ensuring the nutritional needs of the children in this difficult time. And then continue the provision of immunization to all children in public schools and providing them psychosocial and psycho-emotional sessions, activities attuned to the needs of the learners and devising mechanism to protect the learners from attacks of cyberbullying and other forms of abuse. Now, in terms of facilities and utilities, at least ensure once a week disinfecting the classroom and the entire schools, supply of clean water in the classrooms or in designated areas in schools, 
repairs of dilapidated classrooms and other facilities in schools, proper ventilation, uh, lessen the number of learners in the classroom, especially when face-to-face -face session is necessary, and shorten the days and hours of children exposure in the school as well as the teachers. Next slide, please. Now on ensuring infrastructure. Definitely, we want to have a database of the learners and teachers per division and determine the number of learners and teachers with gadgets and access to internet, mobile phones, and so on. Because we want also to explore the online and the offline medium of uh, distance education. And then map out the appropriate learning venues in the barangays and identify local resource persons that could be tap in com conducting community-based sessions, providing gadgets, loads, and budget for internet by utilizing unused allowances and by tapping the services of internet providers. I would like to cite the example of Pamantasan ng Lunsod ng Maynila, which, which is a locally funded uh, university. They recognize that there is no internet connection, capability of the students, the parents, the teachers. So what they did, they convert or they organized a virtual campus. And instead, and for the learners, instead of giving them the tuition, uh, they provide, they converted the tuition by providing them uh, packets, uh, internet connection, Wi-Fi, and so on, so that the learning continuity would proceed. So probably we can explore this kind of uh, uh, um, activity or um, uh, intervention no? done by the um, PLM. Now, with regards to the full advantage of using radio and TV, especially the government, government own PTB4 and so on. So probably what, uh, what our uh, director or representative from the, from the um, uh, telecommunication or information agency can assist the DEPED. Okay. On support mechanism, we would like to capacitate the parents, the guardians, and other siblings in supporting the learning of the learners. In terms of attitudinal formation, knowledge enrichment, and skills development. And then collaborate with barangays and LGUs on how to make their localities a learning environment. And probably we can make use of the special education path to the local school board to provide assistance no, to the needs of the learners and teachers. And then um, collaborate with civil society organizations and private sector to seek their assistance and services to education in the new normal. And then activate and make mandated, mandated, mandated structures functional in the service of education community, like the PTA, the local school board, the barangay, the education committee, the LCC, local council, among others, and probably modify the voucher system and make, make it sure it serves the marginalized, excluded, and vulnerable learners, and align the implementation of four piece into the new normal. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We recognize your suggest. Mr. Then, Chair? Uh, yes. Mr. Chair? Uh, yes, um, Senator Nancy. Oh, just a quick question lang kasi nabanggit kanina yung school feeding program. Can we just get an update from DepEd? Kasi di ba, ilang buwan na rin na walang pasok. So anong nangyari dun sa budget nila for school feeding program? Thank you, Mr. Chair. DepEd, please, uh, ano, please answer. Uh, Mr. Chair, for the, the school feeding program, I, I can... Mr. Chair, this is uh, yes. Ansi. Yeah? 
Uh, and you second. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair and uh, Senator Nancy. Uh, right now, for the school year 2020 to 2021, intact pa po yung ating school feeding program budget. Uh, that's the budget, but um, the program implementation is now being reviewed because, <clears throat> excuse me, it's a protected program under the Bayanihan Law, and it was mentioned under the Bayanihan Law that we should also enhance the, the school feeding program. So right now po, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, ongoing po yung uh, consultation ng ating school feeding program team with the uh, DSWD as well because they are also doing a feeding program right now. However, uh, based on the law, kailangan po kasing gawin yung feeding program in the vicinity of the school. And uh, of course, uh, because we have the uh, risk level uh, situation in different localities, uh, hindi rin po namin po pwede na ipatawag lang basta yung ating mga teachers at mga uh, parents po kasi ang ating mga volunteers dito. As, uh, so kailangan din po natin yung minimum health standard to be uh, complied with. What we envision in the department is to uh, enhance uh, the uh, or expand the coverage uh, when we resume to the face-to-face -face interaction. But this is not yet final, uh, Mr. Chair. So just for an update, it's still um, under review, evolving, and uh, we will consult all the stakeholders on how we will uh, implement. But uh, definitely, it's a protected program under the Bayanihan Law. Uh, ito lang po yung hindi nagagalaw pa sa amin ng uh, Department of Budget and Management. On the finance side, uh, Mr. Chair, also as an update, nakuha na na kami ng 8.2 billion for the Bayanihan Law. And the 5 billion is from our last mile school program. Uh, it's the initiative of um, of the Senate uh, uh, members. Uh, I, I, we are very glad and happy because um, it was uh, mentioned that um, yung pong ating uh, access is a problem and we have disadvantaged um, uh, stakeholders na gusto na sana nating maabot. But the 5 billion pesos was withdrawn by the DBM. 1.4 billion from our voucher program, which is supposed to also expand our uh, voucher program for the private school, has uh, also been withdrawn by the DBM. And um, other programs na hindi pa po na release in the 2019 uh, funds and the 2020 programs um, were um, also um, not released. And uh, officially, we were informed that a total of 8.2 billion was already taken from our budget. I was also informed that there will be a batch two. However, I uh, officially sent a letter to DBM requesting for the holding of that um, evaluation of the withdrawal of funds pending the finalization of our learning continuity plan. Right now, what we are talking about are uh, how to continue the education and all the things that uh, we are discussing has an implication to costing. Uh, um, Ma'am ma uh, Flora of INET, uh, all the things that uh, was mentioned by, by her is included in the LCP. Even the mass testing, the hygiene kits, uh, preparation for the school, repair, water, sanitation, all of these has cost implication. And I know there are a lot of questions about the financing part. To be honest, uh, Mr. Ch uh, Chair, kung gagawin po namin universal yung computation, the need will be more than what we have for 2020 budget, meaning it might be beyond $500 billion if this will be costed. And we did that as an initial practice. Ibig sabihin, kung walang limitation, we will provide everything. We came out, we came up with the 550 billion. But of course, that's so impossible. Even the government is looking for uh, financing for the Bayanihan Fund. In fact, hindi pa po sila tapos for the budget too. Kaya, we are revising the financing on uh, prioritized uh, activities only. And uh, hindi pa po kami uh, ready for uh, this because we are doing the consultation, as, uh, as uh, we said, um, ongoing po ang lahat ng mga uh, cost parameters and the uh, the estimates. So kung ano po yung mauuna, and I think what we really need to have are two uh, major activities. One is the compliance to the minimum health standards, so our schools will be safe. And second is uh, learning resources. So ito pong dalawang to right now. Uh, parallel po, may mga meetings po nangyayari rin uh, inside the Department of Education. Gumaga, gumagana na po yung ating um, team uh, reviewing all the plans and the financing. But 
uh, unang-una nga po is uh, really um, how do we find all of these activities. So uh, we just have to balance kung ano po yung uh, talagang kailangan as priorities and uh, of course kung ano po yung kaya ng pondo natin. Last na lang Mr. Chair is about the Special Education Fund and uh, I know your, your staff already contacted us uh, about this. Um, we just have to maybe have a, a uh, revision of the joint circular by DILG, DBM, and DepEd. Kasi po yung priorities that are uh, mainly on the infra. Well, of course, we need the, the repair and the new construction, but probably we need help on the uh, uh, phrase or a wording on the responsiveness of the activities of the local school board uh, to COVID also and alignment to the uh, learning continuity plan. So so that's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Yusek. Let, let me just uh, repeat what you said. You, you said that we will need 550 billion uh, for... Sorry. Uh, yeah. okay. Mr. Yes. Mr. Chair, that's a, a rough, ano po, rough estimate. It is just the what we need if we will use the universal cost parameters. If, it's been, if we will compute it by 22 million students, 1 million teachers having their own uh, hygiene kit, and providing them with all the minimum health standard, about uh, 350 billion is needed. Yun po yung sinasabi namin na universal pa lang. But of course, we will not get that computation. Ang ginagawa po namin ngayon is the survey of the learners and parents starting June 1. Kaya po kami gagawa ng uh, uh, another registration process is to get um, the idea on how many of the students will have the blended learning, how many can have the capacity to the learning online, how many will need the modules, and how many will be doing the, the home-based uh, schooling. So ito po ay aming kailangan dahil hindi po pwede na compute natin no, sa lahat yung mga kinakailangan. And alam naman po natin, and we are happy that uh, our DOH counterparts are here, na hindi po natin po pwedeng ibalik lahat sa normal na lahat ay papasok by August 24. But we will only have the figure once we get the responses from our learners and parents, which will happen in June. So, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, if you if you will give us the uh, ample time, what we are saying is kung titingnan lang po ang pangangailangan based on the universal um, uh, enrollment uh, figure that we have right now and the personnel, malaki ho talaga yung kailangan. Hindi pa po kasama yung mass testing actually, uh, Mr. Chair, dito. And, uh, you know, 1 million personnel times the, the amount of the, the testing. And of course, the capacity of the laboratories to also do it for us. So, uh, I, I think um, meron naman po kaming guidance from DOH kung sino po talaga ang mga ngailangan ng mass testing and we will comply with that as well. So, yung 550, uh, you said kasama na dito yung learning resources or just or purely health lang to? Uh, it includes already the learning resources, but again, they computed it uh, based on the universal enrollment. Mm -mm. Meaning all will have the modules and everyone will have the complete set. Um, USEC DADS, our curriculum and instruction uh, undersecretary, is also doing the uh, most essential learning competencies. Ibig sabihin, hindi natin kailangan i-produce lahat, but kung ano po yung kakailanganin in the locality. So, so what, you, what you are yes. saying is uh, you will do an actual survey and an actual computation so that uh, yung 550 pwede pang bumaba. Yes, Mr. Chair. Because we want a realistic and of course yung pong ano lang po yung kayang gawin. Uh, of course, the budget is available until December. It will also lapse if it will not be used uh, within the month uh, or within the year na may implement siya. So we are we are all doing this uh, but uh, because of the skeletal workforce that we have, uh, nahihirapan tayo na mas mabilis. But um, it's not a limitation for us. What we're doing are virtual meetings as well. Uh, executive committee and the management committee meetings are almost, are done almost every day. Um, our teachers are also connected through virtual uh, connection. Uh, no, uh, well, uh, sa akin lang, uh, Yusek, of course, the uh, pinakamahalaga dito yung health ng ating mga estudyante tsaka guro and parents na rin, no? Because they bring their students. And... Uh, we need to assure them and guarantee na safe yung kanilang pagpasok uh, this coming August 24, if ever we will have face-to-face, -face, which I will propound later on. But uh, definitely no amount of uh, uh, money uh, yes. should be wasted to guarantee their safety because mga anak natin yan, mga future generations yan. So we have to make sure that 
uh, their safety is always primordial. Uh, at the same time, the learning resources, uh, we're adapting to the new normal. I know marami tayong adjustment na kakailanganin. And uh, a bigger challenge will be um, addressing the quality issues. No? And uh, that's why uh, it's not only delivering education, but we also have a problem with, uh, admittedly, we have a problem in quality. So yeah. we're making sure that uh, we will deliver education in the alternative mode, ensuring quality. Right. And then I, and I, Secretary for and expound touch on the financial uh, implications, uh, Mr. Chair, but the other quality aspect, um, I'm sure, are, are also being responded yeah. to. Not, not to believe or the hearing, uh, you said, pasubmit na lang sa amin yung mga natanggal. Ay, kanina na-mention yung marami na, na natanggal. And uh, please submit to us, once you have the final and realistic number, please submit to us also the breakdown of that amount. Uh, we, yes, will try our, we will try our best to make sure that uh, our parents and students and, and, and teachers are safe when we open our school. Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And, Mr. Uh, Chair? Mr. Yes, Chair? Nancy. Uh, uh, just a yes. suggestion lang kay USAC Sibibia kung pwede pakisama ang DOST dun sa feeding program kasi may mga na-develop na, na sila mga food packs or meals na hahaluan mo na lang ng water and pero very nutritious siya. So baka pwedeng pakisama ang DOST. Yan lang, Mr. Chair. Okay. Um, thank you, Nancy. Thank you very much po. Uh, kasama po yata sila sa, ta sa technical working group. I just uh, failed to mention them. As well as Department of Agriculture kasama po. Because uh, we also get uh, the supply from Department of Agriculture for the school feeding program. We signed a memo MOA with them. We have some more resource person who signified uh, their intention to uh, to share with us. Uh, by order of uh, priority, we uh, you suggest, and then Miss Jeannie of uh, Miss Jeannie Hoxon of PNU, and then Mr. Jerome uh, Buenviaje of uh, UP, and then last will be uh, Mr. Warlito uh, Rosarial. Uh, so you suggest. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yung iba kasi nasagot na ni Yusek Tony at saka ni uh, Yusek Ano. Dagdag ko lang, yung doon po doon sa kaninang uh, budget na pang pangangailangan namin, ka kasama na po doon yung, kone, eh, yung water and uh, sanitation, kaya ganun kalaki. Uh, doon sa punto ni Senator um, Tolentino kanina, totoo po may mga, mga surveys tayong ginawa. Uh, as early as uh, mid-April, uh, may mga surveys tayong ginawa po sa opening of classes, pati yung mga readiness of uh, teachers natin. Kaya nga po nakapa itong ginamit sa pag-decide kung uh, kailan magbubukas yung uh, ating uh, paralan. Majority of the respondents, which includes learners, teachers, per, uh, school personnel, parents and guardians, uh, prefer that it will be sometime uh, August po. Merong uh, August 1 to 15, merong August uh, 16 to 30, and a little bit uh, on a uh, er, uh, later part of uh, July. On top of that, meron pa rin yung survey na ginagawa tungkol sa teacher readiness in distance uh, education and distance uh, learning. Uh, lumalabas po kasi ang umaalala nyo sa tulong ng uh, Kongreso, at saka ng DBM, lumaki po yung budget natin sa computerization. Pero yung computerization na yun na uh, program natin ay patungo po doon sa mga uh, paaralan. So because of this uh, situation na yun, we will expect that uh, some of the teachers and learners will be uh, doing their work no? and uh, learning in the home environment. So gumawa tayo po ng survey para malaman kung ilan doon sa mga teachers natin ang meron mga devices na to. Out of the 17 po na regions, lumalabas po na karamihan ng ating mga guru po ay meron pong uh, computers, may laptop. Uh, pero ang problema, yung uh, internet uh, connection po. Kaya nga po doon sa sinabi namin na magkakaroon ng enrollment validation kasama dito sa data na to, yung uh, pag-collect ng uh, information kung itong mga, ma, uh, mga bata na to o yung mga magulang ay meron din pong uh, mga devices no that they can use if let's say we will use the uh, distance uh, education modality 
Pressure ko lang po to kasi nabanggit kanina na kailangan talaga itong mga data na to para to have an informed uh, learning continuity plan. Um, hihinto na po ako doon kasi alam ko may madami pang uh, resource person na i-recognize. Re Salamat po. Yes. Uh, next will be Miss Jeannie of PNU. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Ms. Jeannie, thank you for joining us, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, thank you for inviting PNU in this um, in this hearing. Uh, we agree with uh, the directions of the Senate on uh, requesting DepEd to uh, look into, to rethink its uh, calendar offering. However, Mr. Chair, uh, sorry, I'd, I'd like to uh, say that it's good in the context of the pre-service teacher education because our, uh, the, the Commission on Higher Education has moved our calendar to August and there's no synchronization to where the pre-service teacher education is in terms of um, practicum of our students kapag hindi nag-move ang DepEd. However, Mr. Chair, we also agree with DepEd that moving it beyond August is also will not allow uh, synchronization, a, a harmony in the in the in the calendar of both the Department of Education and CHED. So within the allotted uh, timeline of the, the law, the existing law, which is between June and August, I think it is but enough and uh, has good room for DepEd to move around to also address uh, CHED's requirement of uh, the pre-service teacher ed. So in that layer, um, uh, Mr. Chair, that's how PNU sees all of this move on looking at the calendar. However, Mr. Chair, I'll take this chance to also appeal to everyone in this group and to all of you in the in 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 in, uh, in this in the Senate that um, all that we are talking about right now are all stopgap measures. We're looking at a response to COVID-19. We're looking at responses to typhoons, etc. And all of these are good. But we're not hitting where the problem really is, Mr. Chair. The problem is our teachers. Our teachers are not prepared to address all of these concerns. And the reasons why they are not prepared stem from the pre-service teacher education. Uh, we've been addressing concerns in the Department of Education. We've been saying our teachers are, are, are not prepared in the Department of Education. But you see, uh, Mr. Chair and everyone, Education begins, the preparation of teachers begin in the pre-service uh, education. It does not begin in the in-service. The in-service is refinement. The development of a teacher begins in all of us in the commission in higher education. The Department of Education in 2017 adopted a good framework, a good platform, a good roadmap to ensure teacher quality. And that's adoption of a competency-based uh, teaching standards. But the Commission in Higher Education has not linked its preparation in the pre-service. So everything that DEPED is doing is while the teachers are in the in-service. But coming, the teachers coming to them are not uh, addressing, are not, are not uh, focused on what the Department of Education would hope to achieve no? and would hope to get in terms of new entrance of, of teachers. In the EDCOM reports years ago, and even I'm sure even before these reports, it has already, they have already established the fact that you begin with teachers. All of this will be addressed and will be uh, contextualized. All of the concerns we're now facing will be contextualized if the teachers are prepared to show uh, what they can do inside a classroom. We protect the teachers, we solve most of the problems in education. The learners are, of course, our outcomes, but you don't, we don't, you don't go to the outcome, Mr. Chair, unless you begin with the source of, of education. No amount of computer, no amount, Mr. Chair, of all the books uh, prepared by DEPED, and DEPED is doing a great, great job in, in, in responding to all of this. But you see, DEPED is manning 900,000 plus teachers. Wala pa po ang non-teaching personnel. Wala pa po dyan ang lahat ng kanilang kailangan i-prepare. They're already doing their, their, a good job. We can, they cannot solve much, most of all of these problems. So we prepare the teachers to face all of these concerns and we have solved much of the problem. Uh, we have studies to show that um, a teacher who does not have classrooms, who does not have books, but are doing good jobs. Vietnam is a very good example, Mr. Chair, in the international arena. 
they have not moved a lot in the infrastructure, but they moved into teacher quality. You look into teacher quality and we have big concerns and we have big solutions, I mean. The cabinet, the, the current cabinet secretary, uh, Carlo Negrales, has started and has initiated a technical working group on teacher quality. And this is in response to the order in, uh, of the president to ensure that CHED is, is responding to the expectations of the Department of Education. In this technical working group, Mr. Chair, uh, CHED and DepEd, Teacher Education Council are all represented there, trying to come up with, with, with possible solutions, which the EDCOM report has already established for us. There's already a roadmap from the start of, of many, many uh, presidential terms before this current, current administration. So uh, in the course of the Philippine Normal University, we are the only remaining normal school in the country, Mr. Chair. The rest of the other nine normal schools in the country has ventured into into other programs and into other um, into other yeah other other uh, courses other programs. PNU is the remaining teacher education institution in the country. We are we are the national center for teacher education, and we've been sending our reports to the to to CHED, to DepEd, to the Senate, to Congress, and and uh, uh, all of these reports are on teachers and how how we will be ensured that our teachers are well prepared to address all of these concerns. In ending, uh, Mr. Chair, if you will please look into a document that DepEd has uh, adopted in 2017 and the World Bank in its report on uh, quality and uh, uh, commerce, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Chair, mentioned that there are four major um, policies that were enacted in the in different agencies in the Philippines. And if these uh, policies are ensured to have all support from all sectors of the government, we will be assured in the Philippines of good movements. And that includes the Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers adopted by DepEd in 2017 uh, to ensure quality of teachers across time. We cannot solve it over time, Mr. Chair. We need at least five years of continuous development using the Philipp using one framework, Philippine Professional Standards for Teachers to ensure, and this was, this was developed by the Philippine Normal University, the Research Center for Teacher Quality based at, the, at, at PNU, Mr. Chair. So uh, in ending, what I'd like to say is that if we address the concerns of teacher, if at one table, Mr. Chair, we can face one another and we can all define one definition what teacher quality means be it a face-to-face -face learning be it distance learning be it open uh, learning be it blended learning mr chair with books with no books with chairs with no chairs if the teachers can address all of these concerns addressing their quality i think the pandemic concerns will be solved, typhoon cancellation of classes will be solved, less of computers in the schools will be solved because the teachers would know what to do. But we have to begin somewhere, Mr. Chair, and spend at least five years of support to, to ensure that they are following all the systems linked to the standards. I think our problems in education will be solved in no less than a few years' time. Marami pong salamat, Mr. Chair. And Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Jeannie. Uh, another resource person, Mr. Jerome Diandiahe of the UP College of Education. Mr. Jerome? Yes, magandang umaga, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, ako po ang dekano ng UP College of Education. At uh, for the benefit of time and to avoid redundancy of all the points uh, that were raised in the committee, I was able to streamline my point. And uh, tatlong punto lang po ang gusto kong ishare. Una ay... Um, um, ang UP College of Education, na isa aming ipaalam sa komite, dahil nandito rin ang DepEd, ang komite ng Senado at ang iba pang sektor, kami po ay, kami po ay bumuo ng Task Force ed uh, Edukasyon. Um, ito ay uh, binubuo ng expert professors mula sa aming kolehiyo at uh, mga researchers. Um, kasama sa aming uh, objective ay bumuo ng isang white paper. Sa ngayon ay... Uh, Plano namin itong i-release this week or probably early next week. Ito ay pinamagatang Stay Well, Keep Learning, Education Resilience and Continuity in the Time of COVID-19. 
ang white paper na ito ay sumasaklaw sa tatlong prinsipyo na sa kahit na anumang aksyon na ating ipatutupad, dapat kilanin na ito ay people-oriented, na ma-prioritize ang safety, health, well-being ng learners, teachers, mga administrators, at ma-emphasize ang collaboration among the community stakeholders. Dapat din ito ay inclusive. Uh, nabanggit na ito maraming beses kanina. Dapat ito ay sensitibo sa, sa diversity, constraint, vulnerabil uh, vulnerabilities of stakeholders. At pangatlo, dapat ito ay innovative. At um, dapat nating tandaan that we build on our strengths and existing practices. Kasi uh, maraming ano, ideas na very ideal, pero we have to capitalize on what we have now, our resources, our networks, uh, while still upholding the quality of education. Um, uh, kasama ng white paper na ito, meron itong pitong strategia. Uh, ang buong dokumentong ito ay isi-share namin sa inyo, pero gusto ko lang ipakita na ito ay sumasaklaw sa tatlong bahagi. Una ay strengthening the teachers, students, safety, health, and well-being, empowering families for home-based learning. Meron kaming mga ELS experts sa kolehiyo na sumulat ng mga papel no, para dito. Um, Naka-focus din tayo sa technical aspect on recalibrating the curricular and assessment priorities, utilizing flexible learning options, importante ang role ng educational leaders for resilience and innovation, at uh, babanggitin din sa papel na ito ang redesigning of the learning environment. Pero higit sa lahat, ang hindi siguro na babanggit doon sa grupo ay yung creating new knowledge, no? taking this opportunity um, as a springboard. Kaya nga, um, ang nais kong ipanukala sa grupo ay huwag natin kalimutan ang punto ng educational research, ang role nito, habang ang mga bagay na ito ay nagaganap para meron tayong basihan for policy evaluation later on. Um, uh, at the end of the day, um, as we go along these practices, um, hindi lang siguro kailangang tignan natin na maitawid ito, pero dapat hindi makompromiso ang, ang kalidad ng edukasyon at ang welfare ng ating kaguruan, ng ating mga estudyante at ating mga uh, administrators. Ayun lang po. Maraming salamat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jerome. Um, Senator Pia, you're raising your hands. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you to the resource persons. No, I was actually listening uh, through YouTube while I was uh, not um, physically in this digital space. So I heard a lot of the comments anyway. Um, first, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, re quick reaction on uh, um, PNU's um, statement, um, K. Ms. Jenny. Um, I fully support. Um, in fact, I have uh, so many um, uh, efforts, but I'd like to ask you to please um, submit. Can you give me a copy of what you're referring to? Because I don't think anyone can do it. But the reality is we get bogged down the politics. Let's, let's call it by its face. You know, we, we, we um, refuse to, to really allege that um, um, parang baka maangko, tapos sasabihin to yung quality ng teachers, pero my dear colleagues and friends here, well, let's face the reality. But if the teachers of cannot also conform at the best, the best of their capability. Mm. I think this is a topic that is perfect for our joint hearing with the Futures Thinking Committee because that is what we have to do. Look into the future. Now we cannot change that tomorrow. Yung, yung, yung intervention na magagawa ng limited, no? They may try their best, baka, baka 18 hours maintaining yung mga teachers, pero you cannot, you cannot replace a crash course with four, four years of, um, you know, uh, quality education and even the quality of those students entering their freshman year as a ed education major, di ba? So, so that really requires long-term planning and it never happens really at the level we are discussing it. We are always in the now. Yes, we are always yes, yes, worried yes. about the classroom size, which is which are all issues. But that is precisely why I funded the Futures Thinking um, Division in depth, and so that we can stand in this way. Now, we cannot compare to other countries. Compare ourselves with other countries. When you look at Nordic countries, how they started, it starts just as very high quality of education. Nila very poor. Then, ang kanilang economic. Uh, economic status at that time. 
but they invested in education. So I know, I know there's no one here who will disagree with me per se. Pero wag na tayo mag hurt feelings, na insulto. Let's just get it done. So on that note, um, yun, Mr. Chair, I would, I would be happy to partner with you on this. Because this is another um, issue that has to be looked into separately. Eh. This is not for June. This is not for the opening of classes. This is long-term quality of education. So that's the first point I want to make. The second point I want to make is um, uh, just a quick reaction. I think the speaker about maybe four speakers ago, I'm sorry, I forgot who I as I said, I was just listening on, on YouTube, so hindi ko nakita yung face niya, hindi ko alam yung name niya. I don't know if he's from PTV4 or if he was DepEd. And sinabi na, they have not actually met. So yun lang naman yung problema ko. Kasi I'm the one who consolidates the comments of all the senators to the president's, it, for the to comments to the president's reports. And tatlong comments na to at least, the seventh comment will be the third time that I am mentioning the need to use government TV stations. And I know the secretary has mentioned it. So para namang naglolokohan lang tayo para marinig ko na hindi pa pala nag-uusap. So parang it's like a dream. It's like a thought. I mean, dapat napapag-usapan na yan. So why would it be up to Channel 4 to decide what educational programs are being aired there? It's very disturbing to me because they are not an educational institution. DepEd should have stepped into the picture as early as March to start talking to them on what programs we want to air. So can we get a follow-up on that, Mr. Chair? Siguro weekly. Kasi yun nga yung point ng comments. And I will direct my, my question to, um, to DepEd. Um, is it uh, Yusek Ani who will, uh, will uh, um, uh, respond? Do you even read the comments? Has it reached you, the comments that we put in the comments of the President's report? Because I put that there. Tapos paririnig ko ngayon na hindi pa pala nag-uusap. So, Ano yung purpose nun na nag-share kami ng ideas and then secretary herself will mention that they will use Channel 4 but there are no talks ongoing. Hindi po joke yung to secure the best content. Ha? Maraming content, maraming content pero just like textbooks, marami din bulok. So we want to be assured that we take advantage of this. In fact, my suggestions were very detailed to the effect that you have time slots for different age groups. For example, um, preschoolers, maaga yung gumigising normally. So baka sila yung pwedeng 7 to 9 yung topics dun e pang preschool. Yung mga ka- man magpuyat, di ba? Marami nag-aaral. May mga programs o na ad- yung mga tipong can institute. Gawin lahat yun. Pero when I hear, na hindi man lang frustrating. So can we get and then last two points. I know and I, I've read um, a statement to streamline the programs. I understand napakarami the important well-being physical well-being is set aside. In Metro Manila ng bahay, dapat ng program yung mga exercising and does not have to take up time channel 4 of uh, calisthenics in the um, exercise ka ang daming pwedeng gawin at the College of Human Kinetics this up into the kawawa Tayo, ang daming pwedeng gawin and please physical education because lalong magkakasakit yung mga bata bawal na nga lumabas hindi nyo patuturuan ang kahalagahan ng health nila and make them move inside their body give me one meter one square meter those kids how to exercise pumping jacks to school please include that kasi hindi so yun oh. The government in build, build, build program to growth. Yeah, I'm sure uh, will be support in terms structure. But what I'd like to point out, I, but for you to ponder about, because you you mentioned, but chances are you will limit the number of students. So let's say 15 to 20 students. 
Yung maliliit na classroom nakita ko, baka nga hindi pa safe yung 20 students. I don't know. Let's ask the health experts to decide. My point is this. If you are going to build, please explore multipurpose centers similar to a gymnasium. Why? I actually went to a school na yung mga six to eight classrooms, isang building lang yon, Walang separate classroom yon. Meron lang mga move up. Hanamin pa. Hindi pa nga yung floor to ceiling eh. And it worked perfectly fine. So a multipurpose center like that, if we are going to invest anyway, may go, may be more productive in the long run. Um, and it can be put up immediately. Um, I also want to hear more details. Now, when you say 20 students lang ang papasok, ano nangyari dun sa 20? Haven't heard any details about possible rotational classes. I may have missed it in the short time that I left, no? But rotational, so if 20 only will go to class maybe Monday and Wednesday or Monday, Tuesday, and then mag-cleaning, tapos pwedeng Wednesday, Thursday, ibang batch naman, and then Friday, Saturday, ibang batch naman, and then what are the others doing? Well, maybe they're at home, maybe they're in a community-based learning. Let's hear some details like that, Mr. Chair, in the succeeding hearings. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Senator Pia. Senator Marcos? Uh, uh, Senator Marcos? Senator, naka-mute yung, you're, you're on mute. Chair, Mr. Chair, uh, naririnig po ninyo ako. Maraming salamat. Yes, kayo, yes, clear na. Kaya tano din. Ayan, at eh, Professor Buendiahe at yung mga nagsalita galing. Uh, lang, gusto ko lang uh, isa. With all due respect to all the peers to me, talking about platforms, the lack of Wi-Fi, and so on. I just wanted to uh, reiterate a uh, an insight that uh, we had um, a few weeks ago in consultation with some uh, teachers here in Ilocos Norte, that perhaps it's also important at this point to assess content. What is really important that we teach the children in the primary grades, lalong lalo na pati high school, alin ba talaga mahalaga sa napakarami nating curriculum, sa napahaba at uh, uh, masalimuot na mga pinag-uusapan from engineering, our fascination with technology, um, our uh, uh, need to look up history and civics. Hindi po ba with this pandemic, Suddenly, everything is focused to what is most urgent. Una, health. Suddenly, that's the most important thing. I am fascinated also with the notion of new knowledge. Biglang food, food supply, how to feed our families becomes so important and uh, that we fail to give our farmers. Parang nababago. Hindi lamang yung delivery, yung platform, yung ating Wi-Fi, kundi ano ba talaga ang content na kinakailangan ituro natin sa mga kabataan. Ikalawa, siguro, dahil eto nga, no, reactive tayo dahil uh, lahat tayo hirap, ano, urgent lahat at responsive lahat. Pero wag naman quick fix lang, kundi una, i-assess natin yung educational content. Ikalawa, siguro i-assess rin natin reorganize, hindi lang yung uh, Department of Education, kundi siguro i-reorganize rin natin yung educational system for the longer haul. Kasi palagi ko, hindi na talaga tayo babalik sa dati. Parang uh, nasa assumption fear pa rin natin na pansamantala pa lang ito at uh, babalik tayo dun sa system ng dati. I think we need to really reevaluate also not only the content but the organization of the DepEd and our educational system them. Na talagang online, Wi-Fi, distance learning, house, all of this will become integral central parts of the system. Hindi namang classroom learning as we remember it. Maraming salamat po, Mr. Chair. Yun lang po. Ang long Thank term ng content. I agree. Totally agree. Yan ang new normal. In fact, uh, one of the opportunities that, present, that was presented by the virus is a faster transition to the digital age. Uh, even for government, no? application for government, application for any government uh, requirement, everything should be done online. Hindi ka na pupunta physically sa office. And that should be hastened. Bilisan na dahil nga, um, it's really an opportunity for us to invest in uh, digit digitization. 
Tama, tama nga po. Uh, Mr. Chair, yung digital divide has become uh, great and yawning in the, the period of the pandemic. At uh, ang daming reklamo, lahat ng mga government portals nag-bog down from SSS so, to GSIS, lahat bagsakan, feel health, talagang wala kang uh, ma-log on. Talagang uh, bagsakan, hindi kinaya ng sistema. So let's take this, as you say, as an opportunity rather, uh, rather than a complete disaster. Salamat po. Um, we have another resource person, so Mr. Warlito Rosarian, who has, uh, who has signified his uh, intention to speak. Mr. Warlito? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, good morning. Good morning. This is from the National Association of Public Secondary Schools of the Philippines. I will zero only on the things na hindi masyado na discuss po, sir. Yeah, let's, con let's, let's uh, abbreviate and uh, go to straight to the point. On the testing of teachers, kasi nangyari po ito sa school ko eh. Mayroon akong isang senior high school teacher, COVID positive, hindi alam ng school. Pumunta siya sa Manila to take care of his son. Doon niya nakuha yun sa Manila. Pag, po, pag uwi niya dito sa amin, nagturo pa siya ang nagkandak ng exam. We really don't know what happened. Only the school was aware na na-hospital siya at namatay. Doon ang pinaka mabigat na trabaho ko. Yung pagtutok at ang pag-track sa lahat ng mga estudyante, sa mga teachers at empleyados po, napakahirap. By God's grace, in close coordination with our city health office, lahat-lahat po ginawa, March, April, hanggang May po, praise the Lord, lahat po, hindi po na... Nangin positive ang mga estudyante. I would like to reiterate, sinabi po doon kanina ni Senator Nancy na kailangan din may, may testing ang mga teachers. Senator po, please help us. Mahirap po on our part. Lalong-lalong pa na first time ito nangyari. Sana po measures will be under, undertake by your committee in order na ang ibang schools naman in the future, hindi po makaranas. We praise and thank the Lord na walang nangyari po sa mga bata. Next item po, yung pinatutukan po ng superintendent naman ng iba, in the, because of the new normal brought about by COVID-19 po, on the issue of the readiness of teachers and the capacity of our learners to engage in an online blended education and the limitations of our internet-based learning. Sir, please tulungan niyo po kami sa public school system. Talaga, we need the free Wi-Fi all over the country in the elementary and secondary schools. Sana po matulungan niyo kami. We also need good laptops for our teachers na may video cams, Kape, uh, compatible po sa online teaching and learnings. Kung pwede lang po, all classrooms should be provided with laptops, with video cards, and compatible compatible on learning and teaching learning. And also, please try to revisit our special education fund. Tingnan natin doon kung anong mga provision doon na makatulong talaga. Kanina, natouch yun ng isang resource person. Doon po, kailangan din. At si Senator, Senator Marcos po, kanina nagsabi, and I like the proposal, bakit po bigyan natin ng flexibility ang local school board sa bawat regions or sa bawat municipality and provinces? Kasi iba naman ang situation sa Manila, iba naman dito sa sa mga provinces. So I think it is best on the on the interest of our public school system na bigyan din ng flexibility at it was reiterated kanina ni Jose Comali ang mga local school boards in the and nationwide to take care on to these things, no? At isa pa po Ito po ang nangyari. Thank you for the invitation. I believe the National Association of Public Secondary Schools of the Philippines ang ginawa po itong public hearings, Senator, Mr. Chair, is a welcome development para po ma-address natin ang pandemic ito. Maraming salamat po. God bless the Philippines. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, we have also invited uh, Yusek uh, Abelia of UNESCO. Yusek, are you still there with us? Or the uh, Deputy Executive Director of UNESCO? Uh, nandiyan pa buho sila? O oh, wala na ho? I guess wala na. No, I, uh, we invited UNESCO to... Uh, sir, nandito pa po. Nandiyan pa ba? Nandiyan pa? Uh, sir, good uh, afternoon. Mr. Mr. Leon. Yeah, yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. 
Yes. Um, it, uh, it, it, can you share with us your uh, findings uh, in, in relation to uh, the effects of COVID to our education sector? Sir, uh, we are we are pleased to share that uh, so far po uh, ang Philippines po kasi dun sa very recent initiative ng UNESCO on the Global Coalition for Education. We are actively participating on that one, sir, through the Department of Education. Uh, so, yun pong mga uh, challenges that we are facing right now are also being echoed to this global coalition. And right now po, itong co coalition na ito is also conducting surveys in different member states para po malaman kung ano po yung extent nung, nung challenges that we face. Kaya po, ito pong um, meeting that we have right now is also very uh, useful po and relevant para rin po ma-echo namin pabalik sa kanila. But at the same time, sir, through this coalition, meron pong mga initiatives na naumpisahan which are all addressing the need to parang uh, support po yung mga solutions natin for distance learning. On the part of UNESCO po, uh, if I may just mention some of it po, sir, uh, they have already initiated some activities uh, through online. Uh, ito po yung tungkol sa ensuring equity in remote learning response to school closures. Uh, supporting teachers to maintain continuity of learning during school closures, addressing the gender dimension of school closures, managing high stakes and assessments during the pandemic, and distance learning, uh, addressing the concerns of the teachers din po. So, kumbaga sir, uh, yung mga aspects po na kailangan din po na hindi natin ma-miss out, yung sinasabi nga rin po kanina na there are details that need na to be further threshed out ito po yung gusto rin po sanang mag-share ng UNESCO na meron po mga available na tools online. These are resources na nakala po ng UNESCO both from the public and private uh, sectors na pwede pong i-share as free resources na baka rin po pwede magamit ng mga member state countries like the Philippines. So to end lang po yung comment po namin, um, uh, the, the, the UNACOM or the UNESCO National Commission of the Philippines lots the Philippine Department of Education for creating an education forum which is an effective platform to to discuss policy making and to give the stakeholders the opportunity to share ideas and recommendations on how to come up with the viable responses to this pandemic in ensuring that equitable and quality education and lifelong learning opportunities are delivered and for the part of UNESCO po it will continue to to uh, share kung ano man po yung resources or uh, recommendations that could be uh, used by the member state countries like the Philippines para po mas maka-support po dun sa ating mga responses for the COVID pandemic. Thank you very much po for the opportunity. Sir. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lindsay. And uh, please submit to us some of your materials yung mga na-mention nyo kanina uh, so that the committee yes, can uh, use it a... and uh, be guided. Uh, I, have, I have a few questions yes. to DepEd. No? I, I know si Yusek Dads wants to to share, uh, um, but I have some questions to DepEd. So this coming of August 24, no, from a perspective ng parents, ano ang ini-expect nila uh, this August 24? Papasok ba physically ang students? What type of uh, learning uh, modality are we going to implement? No? Um, anyone from DepEd who can answer? Yusek Dads or Yusek Jess? Yes. Mr. Chair. Um, request our Yusek Dads po, uh, Mr. Yusek Chair. Dads, uh -oh. on, on August 24, ano ba ni-expect natin? Uh, um, as we have mentioned po, uh, we will make available um, different multiple uh, learning delivery modalities. So the schools will actually determine uh, or the school's division officers. But ideally, yung school po talaga will have to determine the appropriate learning delivery modality that they will implement. So they will be the ones to clarify this to the parents during the enrollment period or after the enrollment period because part of the things that will be done is to actually gather information on what is the best and most suitable learning delivery modality that the school would be able to provide. Hindi rin po sagutin yung points ni uh, Senator Pia. On, go ahead. Um, yes, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, we just like to um, inform this um, body also that 
um, the department has been assured by Secretary Andanar that uh, ETV4 uh, can be used for our TV and radio based instruction as an additional learning modality. We have yet to meet because we are finalizing the specific strategies and details. Right now, po kasama sa mga ginagawa namin yung pag uh, convert ng mga materials into um, uh, text or yung mga scripts that could be used by uh, people that will actually do the radio based instruction or TV. The other thing po is on um, yes, we know that even if uh, classes can still can already be done in the schools, uh, we would have to observe social distancing. So we have the Miss Sosa modified in school of school approach that has been in place um, during calamities before, but this will be actually the the version of the blended learning model that we will have. That yes, for certain days, uh, there would be a certain number of learners that can only come to school uh, during a face-to-face -face meeting with the teachers, and we will make use of the self-learning modules during the days that they are supposed to learn from home. Yung naman pong issue ni Senator Aimee on the attention to the content, we have developed, I, we have sent you actually through Ms. Attorney Badet, the most essential learning competencies that the Bureau of Curriculum has prepared. It has essentially streamlined our uh, learning competencies from the old 14,162 in our curriculum guides to just about 5,178 or a reduction about about 60 percent. But this also means that the schools will can still enhance if they feel that the, there are learning competencies that should be given emphasis in their own specific areas, we will not prohibit, but we have just laid out the, the most essential ones. Um, and a debit order will be released very soon um, so that we can provide the guide, guidelines on how this should be interpreted and used in the schools. But essentially, this is the anchor of the learning resources we are developing now. Everything we're doing is anchored on the most essential learning competencies that we have identified. Thank you, Paul. Uh, second, uh, Senator Marcos. Yes, just a quick uh, reaction to you, Sec. Dad. Sa totoo lang, di ba, Chairman Sherwin? Sa totoo lang, kasalanan rin ng mga lawmakers. Ang katutak na subject, ang linelegislate natin, na isama sa curriculum. So, panahon na siguro, and this may need legislation in many cases, you, Sec. Dad. Tignan natin kung kaling yun talagang pwede na siguro i-consolidate, i-integrate, i-simplify, o tanggalin altogether. Kasalanan rin namin yan. Thank you. To be honest, about to be honest, Senator Marcus, we look at the list of proposals. And dami talaga from from traffic rules to road safety and other things. No, but of course, what we want is to have more time teaching the basics, no, math, science, and reading, so that our students will be will have more time in in deepening their learning on those. Yes, you check that. One quick point uh, on uh, on what the kids are supposed to be doing while uh, like um, during this time. Um, our partners also have prepared videos that can be uh, downloaded online, guiding them on how to learn certain sports, execute you know skills, etc. We've been um, oriented by our partners. These are available. I yeah. don't think I'm allowed to mention the. The companies, but they they make this available, and there are users actually among our public school learners. Mr. Chair, um, let's take this also as opportunity. Kung sana, Mr. Chair, hingin natin sa DepEd at sa iba pang stakeholders, alin yung mga batas o yung mga required subject na pwede nang uh, ipagkaisa o di kaya tanggalin na altogether or ilagay ng uh, less units and so on. Sana yung mga suggestion ng DepEd, ibigay na rin sa atin para we can act on it because in many cases, they were legislated. Yes, uh, you said that. Uh, please take note of that uh, request from Senator Marcos. Yes, po. we will uh, submit. You said going back to uh, expectations. No, um, it seems to me that uh, uh, the GCQ will be here to stay, and it might prevail until uh, August uh, twenty-four and beyond. Under the GCQ scenario, ano ini expect natin? No? Because I think uh, Metro Manila will enter into GCQ later on. And uh, what do we expect 
in our schools under a GCQ scenario? Most likely for distance, either online or using uh, modules. Can you repeat that? Na break up kayo, um, you said? Ang um, sense po namin, pag GCQ ay distance learning, either online or modular, the print modules to be used. But in other, I get the sense na hindi pa final ang uh, mode of teaching delivery. I get, uh, uh, for example, GCQ, what, 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 do, what do we expect? No, um, I, I want to know it from now, uh, uh, I want to know now what expectation natin under a GCQ scenario. We are getting ready for with the self-learning modules that will be used by a big number of learners who do not have access to the internet. And uh, so we will even allow the schools to do the re re reproduction. What's important is um, the, the self-learning modules are made available. So right now, po, what we have instructed our team was to really pay attention to the first four weeks initially so that we will be assured that in the first four weeks of the opening of the school year, there would be um, materials that will be available for use by the teachers and learners. But are we, and then I understand that their GCQ scenario, we will also practice distance, social distancing. Um, my, my sense po is the, the teachers and learners will not have to go to school. The challenges that we will have to address is how do we deliver the print modules? And uh, we are now in the process of discussing possibilities like tying up with our local government units, the barangay captains, uh, and other um, NGOs willing to help them and make these learning modules available to the learners in instances where no one is still allowed to be in school. So under GCQ scenario, wala pa rin papasok ng skulahan? Yan po ang sense ko. But is that the is that already the policy? Under the sense, but is that really the expectation? Yan na ba ang policy natin? Can we pack it off po yung mic? Meron pong naka-on na mic. Yan. So going back, I think that not only not only sense, ah, but under a GCQ scenario, ano ba yung uh, magiging policy? ng DepEd sa pagtuturo. Do we, papapasukin ba natin yung estudyante? Uh, what type of learning mode are we going to adopt under GCQ? Because that seems to be the most likely scenario in Metro Manila and the rest of the country. Mr. Chair? Ah, si, yes, Yusek, yes. Tony, na lang Yusek, po. Yusek Tony and then si Attorney Erap after. Apo. Uh, Mr. Chair, just to supplement what our Yusek Dads mentioned, in the learning continuity plan, yung learning delivery options of the LC people, yung very specific answer to your question. Uh, dahil po sa ngayon, Mr. Chair, dati po under EO 112, wala man po yung sitwasyon, ECQ at GCQ. Sa GCQ po, may klarong nakalagay po sa batas in the guidelines attached, attached to that uh, executive order hindi pa rin po po pwede ang physical face-to-face -face learning. However, with the recent IATF resolution, yung GCQ po dinis-aggregate sa dalawang kategorya pa po, yung low risk and moderate uh, risk severity grading. And in our learning continuity plan po ng ating, na naideklara na po ng ating mamliling Briones, face-to-face, -face, kung yun po ang tinatanong Mr. Chair, is an option only in very low risk areas such as geographically isolated and if i may quote i'm reading now that portion of our lcp disadvantage and conflict affected areas with no history of infection and very low and easily monitored external contacts and with teachers and learners living in the vicinity of the school any face to face learning delivery must have a proper risk assessment kung yun po ay papahintulutan ng kanila pong GCQ level uh, na in, uh, implemented sa kanilang lugar and must adhere strictly to the health protocols in place. 
Potential learning spaces in the community near the school may be explored to add spaces for the conduct of classes with appropriate social distancing. Ang klaro po, Mr. Chair, yung uulitin po natin, Mr. Chair, para po sana matugunan yung agam-agam ng ating mga magulang. Hindi po porket August 24 nga po ay opening of classes, automatic face-to-face -face kaagad. Kung meron man pong face-to-face -face learning na mangyayari, yung mga kondisyon po na nabanggit po natin na mahigpit pong inutos ng ating kalihim briones ay dapat po masunod. Ano po ang maaari pong mangyari kung hindi po pwede ang face-to-face? -face? Doon din po sa learning continuity plan, Mr. Chair, na amin na pong roll out sa atin po mga paaralan, meron din pong tinatawag na blended learning. Yan po ay nabanggit na po ni Yusek Dads. Second uh, delivery option distance learning, and then finally, homeschooling. Pag sinabi pong blended learning, Mr. Chair, ito po ay maaaring kombinasyon ng face-to-face -face and uh, online and modular learning delivery. Yun po yung sinasabi po ni Yusek Dads na kung hindi po uubra ang face-to-face -face talaga, we will be giving them self-learning modules. Yung... Uh, Online or distance learning, uh, Mr. Chair, nakalimitan ay inuugnay po sa online ay hindi naman po ganoon. Pwede rin po yung mga nabanggit po kanina through TV and radio. And our office po, ang, 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 ang ating pong, uh, uh, office of the secretary tulad po ng nabanggit po kanina ay nakikipag-ugnayan po sa PTV4 tulad po ng nasabi, diretso po kay Sec Andanar. Siguro po hindi lang po na sabihan pa yung atin pong isang resource person po kanina na meron na pong ugnayan na ganyang nangyayari. At sa bahagi po ng partnership uh, office po natin, Mr. Ch, we are also together with our youth that's the relevant offices, ICT of our DepEd, we are already talking to uh, radio operators, even local, Mr. Chair. Uh, dahil ma ma mahalaga po yan, Mr. Chair, eh, kasi hindi naman po natin inaasahan na magbibigay po ng free airtime ng mahabang oras ang mga radio. So may mga posibilidad pong pag-uusap na halimbawa sa lunes, Mr. Chair, aabisuhin natin ang lahat ng ating mga mag-aaral. 8 to 9, grade 6, please tune in to Radio Station 1 on the subject math. May mga ganun pong pag-uusap, Mr. Chair. Uh, ngayon ba, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, 9 to 10, Radio Station 2, subject science. May mga ganyan po, pero hindi ko pa naman po sinasabi na yan na ang mangyayari, Mr. Chair. Pero yung pag-uusap po ay, uh, ay, ay nagaganap na po, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Uh, you, siguro you, po, sir, you, sir Tony, maputol ko lang kayo. When do we see a finalization? Kailan ma-finalize ma yan? Uh, because what we want to know, no, alam ko exploratory to with TV, but what we want to know is when do we see a final result of all of these uh, proposals? Because um, mabilis ang oras eh. And uh, we, August 24 will be just around yeah. the corner. No? So when do we see uh, in development nito matagal rin? No? They don't develop this overnight. So when do we see a... Uh, I, I know there's a plan, but the sabi nga kanina ni Senator uh, Marcos, the devil is in the details. No? So kailan natin makikita yung mga detalye nito? We'll, we'll get back to you, Mr. Chair, for the specific timeline on that. We beg for your indulgence, Mr. Chair. Naunawaan po namin uh, yung amin pong mga opisina. Ay, uh, pero makakaasa po kayo, Mr. Chair, na yan po ay maikakasa bago po mag-August 24. And, po and, namin, pero and pero hindi po na kailangan na Agosto po mangyayari yan. Mr. Yeah. Chair, ang maganda pong idiin din siguro, Mr. Chair, dun sa learning continuity plan, na ibinigay po yung uh, mga general guidelines on how, tulad po nang nabanggit ko po, learning may happen, yung pagdidesisyon kung ano po yung gagawin ay idinelegate po natin sa region and division offices. Uh, hindi po yan uh, pare-pareho, Mr. Chair. Pero babalikan ko po namin po yeah. kayo specifically on the radio-based instruct instruction uh, with our USEC dads uh, at the helm. Thank you po, and, and Mr. Also, Chair. And also, I... I, I... And you said I also get this, no? Because the sense that uh, uh, since sabi nga ni Yusek Ann na hindi pa ready yung budget, obviously without the budget, we also don't know what type of mitigating measures, what type of 
minimum health standards that we will implement in our school. Uh, we also need to finalize that because, uh, of course, bibili pa tayo, dadalim pa sa mga eskwelahan. For example, a very simple ano, thermal scanners. Uh, we will need a lot of thermal scanners, no? a lot of uh, uh, alcohol supply. So, without uh, a target budget, hindi rin natin alam kung ilan ang kakailanganin natin. So, all of the, my point is, all of these things should be finalized soon. No? And uh, ang gusto ko lang is, we, need, we want to assure our parents that by August 24, no, if there will be some form of face-to-face um, uh, -face learning, ready na tayo with all of this equipment. Opo, Mr. Chair. On the minimum health standards that you mentioned, Mr. Chair, we're almost done, if not, we're already done with that, Mr. Chair. Kasi yan po yung unang uh, dapat pong uh, klaro na aasahan po natin sa mga paaralan na dapat po nilang uh, sundin. We will immediately get back to you on that, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, uh, hopefully, you, Mr. Uh, Chair. hopefully, uh, Yusek, uh, wag nang lumampas this month because uh, by next month, it's already June, no? And then we're talking about uh, two and a half months to go. So let's, let's finalize everything within the month. Uh, the budget, the details, uh, what are the uh, uh, modes of delivery, uh, the details of the modes of delivery. Uh, what I'm trying to get at is the expectation of our parents need to be managed also. And at the same time, the assurance that uh, uh, we're taking care of the welfare and the health of our uh, parents, teachers, and um, students. Apo, Mr. Chair, loud and clear. Thank you, Mr. Yes. Chair. Attorney Arap? Mr. Chair? Yeah, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, bago po lahat, I uh, just want to thank uh, the, the DepEd, uh, particularly Yusek Tony, Yusek Jess, Yusek Ann, and Yusek Dads. They've been very helpful. Yung mga binanggit ko po kanina ng mga datos, uh, yung iba po na ibigay na po natin sa kanila. And uh, we thank them, especially si Secretary Liling Briones, who made personally the appeal to the IATF on behalf of the private sector. Uh, Senator Win, yun lang po sa mga administrative concerns and the uh, delivery modes. Uh, for the private sector, uh, we would like to inform the committee that our preparations uh, for the school opening are on the uh, are on the flexible learning, mga distance learning. No, we're not preparing for a face-to-face -face or residential uh, opening of classes. Unless, uh, because we're not anticipating the uh, lifting of the restriction for uh, public gatherings, uh, etc., anytime soon. So our preparation is really on the flexible uh, learning, online, blended, offline. Yan po ang aming preparation. So having said that, uh, Mr. Chair, we're also concerned about the administrative uh, concerns. Like po yung binanggit yung kanina, yung ano po ba yung preferred mode. But uh, kung yun po ang sa public sector, Sa amin po sa private sector, ang, ang uh, cost po ngayon ng, uh, ng concern is the uncertainty. Kasi po sa in different regions, may mga binapanggit po na they need, uh, private schools need to get prior permission or permit from the Department of Education before they move towards the flexible learning uh, options. Uh, at sa ngayon po, wala pa naman pong malinaw na guidelines. Uh, siguro po, para hindi na rin makadagdag sa mga administrative burdens, I think Siguro po out of necessity. I think uh, we expect that uh, all of the schools will be, will be moving towards uh, flexible learning options and it should not be viewed as a privilege. At yung pong pag-a-apply lang mismo, eh, a burden na po yun dahil hindi naman po makakapunta sa mga regional offices. At uh, sa ngayon, wala naman po tayong benchmark where do we uh, base uh, the guidelines or criteria and everything is really a moving target. But having said that, uh, Mr. Chair, Cocopea is uh, willing to cooperate with the Department of Education so that we can uh, take care of the private education uh, sector at least for the monitoring. Tutulong po kami doon. But uh, we also would like to appeal for some uh, flexibility in the rules. Uh, sana po hindi na, wala na muna po sana ng uh, administrative uh, uh, barriers or burdens before. We, kasi po ngayon nagpe-prepare lahat. Eh. Some are opening in June, in July. Uh, if we're saying that they still need to uh, apply for a permit at wala pa naman po yung guidelines ngayon, hindi po natin alam kung kailan po ito uh, magagawa. And in the meantime, we have to deal with a lot of uh, things to prepare. So we hope uh, magkaroon na rin po ng, uh, ng uh, clarification dyan. Kailangan po pa, pa po ba kaming kumuha ng separate permit or hindi na or, or 
sufficient na po yung existing permit ng mga private schools na nagbigay po ng DepEd even prior to the pandemic. All right. Thank you, Attorney Arab. And si Ma'am was uh, raising your hand. Ma'am, I don't have your name in my list. Uh, 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 can you uh, please identify yourself? Ma'am? Uh, uh, yes, Ma'am. Go ahead po. Okay. Uh, can you un uh, unmute? Yan. Okay. So, uh, na Nakamute ulit po. Naka, yeah, no. Naka mute po kayo. Yeah, Mr. Chair. Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, okay. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. This is Kusina Manalo of PPSDNC. I remember me. But yes, I'm here yes. to represent uh, Dr. Kark Makasayon of the PPSD National. Maybe okay. Ko lang po, ano? Okay, yes, po. yes, yes. Uh, with the ongoing talks on the resumption of classes amidst this COVID-19 pandemic on August 14 of this year, the foremost question that comes to our minds as teachers is how. And for the government through DepEd to present concrete preventive measures to guarantee the safety and well-being of the students, teachers, and education support personnel so as to forbid further outbreak of the virus and hastening of, the, of its transmission while providing quality education to our learners in these extraordinary times to the adoption of the new normal approaches in formal education. Now, in, in, the, in the pronouncement of DepEd, in the May 5th, 2020, uh, DepEd will allow schools and community learning centers to choose relevant and appropriate alternative learning and delivery methods that will best fit the context or health situation in the respect communities when schools reopen on August 24 for school year 2020-2021, which will depend on the school's local COVID-19 situation as well as access certain learning platforms with DepEd crafting the Learning Continuity Plan or the LCP as its major response and commitment in ensuring the health, safety, and well-being of our learners, teachers, and personnel in the time of COVID-19 while finding ways for education to continue amid this crisis for the upcoming school year. Now, they have presented learned the different learning the modalities, as was mentioned before, like blended learning, distance learning, homeschooling, face-to-face -face subject to the approval of the DOH and the IATF. But then, but then, with these approaches, the challenge to be faced is the technology access, not only to the students, but teachers themselves. Remember, with the K-12, the demand to be 21st digital compliant teachers, the teachers were confronted the need to be skilled in the application of the multimedia in teaching, the making of lesson plans, computation of grades, and in online transmission of reports of DepEd that requires uh, good activity. But then you know very well that we, we lack this, uh, this connectivity in, in DepEd, uh, which is supposed to, supposedly paperless com communication. Thus, teachers have to equip themselves with all the gadgets from laptop, projector, and packet Wi Fi because of the lack of connectivity in the schools. And in some instances, they go to internet cafe for connectivity to the point of borrowing money from private lending institutions because of their meager salaries, which are not even enough to support and buy their basic essentials for their families. If teachers have these problems, how much more with our students whose families are financially hard up? And if ever they can afford this kind of learning, the conduciveness of the learning environment at home, the shared responsibility of parents in the learning process of their children, and the attitude of the children towards this platform and their technological comp competence except, of course, the expertise in the TikTok and cyberbullying among their classmates and peers, all of this would have to be taken into consideration. Unless everything is in place, face-to-face -face learning is still foremost in the development of the totality of the learner, from instant gratification, assessment, and evaluation of the learning, and productive interaction among them with the teachers, among themselves, and foremost with the teaching materials. Nobody can ever replace, but then nobody can ever replace the teacher as the basic technological 
tool in the student's learning process, even with the new normal. Lastly, education must be inclusive. That faced with this health world crisis, no child should be left behind. Embracing all the marginalized, vulnerable, indigenous people of our country, depending on the needs of their communities. Now, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, you know very well no, our, 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 our problems, no? Like, uh, prior to this pandemic, it is already an open knowledge that teachers are always confronted with the perennial problems of cramped classrooms, and the sub ratio of number of students to the number of restrooms, with no adequate supply of water, insufficient hand washing areas, lack of clinic personnel, health personnel, guidance counselors, which are more essential more than ever because of this, the need, the subject things to, that need to be addressed and is solved by the government. Now, uh, if we are to adapt, like I have asked a teacher from the grounds, and there is already the plan of some of the schools to be approved by the deputy central, and uh, uh, that there is the possibility of, of uh, implementing the or adapting the blended learning. In the blended learning, this is a mixture of face-to-face. -face. There is a scheme of three days of face-to-face, -face, but then the rest of the week, it would be online and uh, modular learning learning de de uh, delivery. So what comes to mind is that with all of this, with all of these problems, we would like to raise the impossibility of the following if it comes to face-to-face. -to -face. Social physical distancing versus lack of classrooms. Reality, in urban areas as a standard size classroom would be divided so as to accommodate 45 different size classroom in one half of the room, another 45 plus plus in the other half of the room. Uh, Philippines has the worst teacher-student ratio in Asia. This remains to be the case even as DepEd introduced. The congestion measures like authority delivery mode refers to the non-traditional educational program recognized by the DepEd, which applies a flexible learning philosophy and a curricular delivery program that includes non-formal and informal sources of knowledge, skills, alternative learning systems or ALS. It is a parallel learning system in the Philippines that provides a practical option to the existing formal uh, instruction, which one does not have or cannot access uh, formal education in school. ALS is an alternate substitute, like the mod modified, as mentioned by uh, Yusek Dads, they have this modified in-school of school approach, the MySOSA, and two shifts of classes. Frequent hand washing versus insufficient hand washing facilities and inadequate water supply. The lack of school-based health personnel to watch out for any possibility of infection. Lack of guidance counselors to appease anxiety among students and teachers. Inadequate school-based guards to ensure physical distancing among students as they enter, exit, and move around the school grounds and along the, the, the corridors. Not enough number of utility, utility personnel to maintain clean restrooms, cleanliness, and what are proper waste disposal. Sir, if we, are, if we have to heal as one, they, we have to move as forward as one. Maraming salamat po. Thank you, ma'am. And uh, my last question to DepEd, in minimum health standards natin, uh, uh, do we have already uh, this document? You said, Tony. We're, we're confident, Mr. Chair, that uh, we could provide this to you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Napag-usapan na po namin yun ng huling uh, exico, Mr. Chair. Eh. Uh, bigyan yun lang po ako uh, within the day, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, kung handa na po, ibibigay po namin. Pero kung hindi, it will be in the next couple of days, uh, Mr. Chair. So uh, I, I would assume meron na tayong framework for the minimum health standards. It's just a matter of making it more realistic, you know, sabi nga ni Yusek Ann, so that we can quantify how much per school uh, to achieve that minimum health standards. Meron ba tayong yung framework? Meron po. Klarong klaro po, Mr. Chair. Meron na po tayo, Mr. Chair. If okay. not today, Mr. Chair, in the next couple of the, uh, days, Mr. Chair, on the minimum health standards, Mr. Chair. Yes, can you submit to us the minimum health standards and also um, a, 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 the, the, the final uh, learning continuity plan? Uh, the framework at least, in framework pala. Yeah, yeah, 
Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, we, we could do that, Mr. Chair, uh, within today, the learning continuity okay. plan. And, yes, and, and, within, and within the month, you said, I would like to urge the DepEd to already finalize um, the details of the learning continuity plan. I know it's a tall order, but uh, forecasting what will happen and managing expectation is also very important. And I can see that... Uh, even on August 24, ang pinaka worst natin or pinaka best natin for that matter is a GCQ scenario. No? And uh, for example, here in Valenzuela, kung GCQ, what do we expect? No, do we uh, let the students come in? If it's a if it's a uh, blended learning, distance learning, home learning, what type of uh, uh, what type of uh, uh, physical interaction will our students? Um, uh, experience, uh, what type of materials do we need? All of these things should be detailed so that uh, by August 24, uh, uh, ready na tayo. And uh, from from my experience with government, it takes months no, to get up all of these things up and running. So we need to get these details uh, finalized within within the month or else mauubusan tayo ng oras, especially on the budget. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Opo. All right. And uh, with, with that, um, uh, I have no more questions. He, Senator Marcos, any any parting words? Po? Wala po, Papa. Salamat lang ako sa chairman natin at uh, lahat ng resource persons. Kung anong isasubmit, pakibigay na lang ng kopya at uh, talagang pag-aaralan natin maigi. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, uh, Senator Marcos. Thank you to the other centers. Thank you to the DepEd family. I, I know uh, itong situation natin is very complicated and we're all adapting to this uh, to this new uh, scenario but uh, we owe it to our students and to our parents especially to our teachers and I just want to go out and assure our parents, teachers and the students that the uh, government is looking after their welfare and um, uh, all of these things are put into detail and the budget is ready to support them and uh, we need to demonstrate that as clear as possible. So uh, I'd like to urge again, no DepEd, that within the month, let's finish this so that uh, by next month, we can uh, get this up and running and uh, um, finish all of the execution issues. So with that, thank you very much for your time. Uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa ating mga resource persons. Maraming salamat po sa yung oras. Please, um, just as a final word, we'll be consolidating the four bills uh, I mentioned earlier um, dahil mahirap po mag technical working group via virtual technical working group I, I, technical working group that's that's where that's where all the nitty-gritty and the debates really happen please submit to us your position paper detailed no? um, provision by provision section by section as clear as possible so that we can um, take account all of these uh, different position papers and merge it uh, with the proposed bills. Um, pag hindi namin nakuha yung position paper, then you're waiving your opportunity, uh, the opportunity to comment on the position paper. But if you have any comments on the position paper, submit it to us as detailed as possible. No? Uh, we will try to do away with a physical technical working group and even a virtual technical working group because of its uh, uh, complication. So please submit it to us. Please submit the position paper to us on or before um, on or before May 20, which is uh, a week from now. Center Pia. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, um, yes, just, a few, just a few parting words. Um, I agree with Senator Marcos that legislators are the number one uh, uh, contributors to the uh, expanded curriculum, but um, Yusek Omali can confirm that there is actually a DepEd order, uh, or is it an, what, what order is it, executive order, that actually requires that they stick to the core curriculum. But I do agree with Senator Marcos that, you know, let's, let's all face it and, and recognize that we are the culprits. And the truth is, DepEd has always had a solution to incorporate a lot of these subjects, all the subjects that we could recommend they incorporate in other subjects that are really blended together. Ang mangyayari, yung sponsor magagalit pa. Gusto, sariling time, you know? It doesn't work that way. So in as much as I, as you all know, I espouse physical 
uh, fitness as a, uh, for your mental and physical health. But I'm not going to dictate, no? I mean, it can be embodied in every single moment between classrooms and just to stand up and shake their, your body. That's fine with me. So we should all have that attitude and uh, I will support talaga the move to do that, no? Um, second point I want to make, thank you for the clarifications, uh, Yusek Umali, about some of the issues that I raised that uh, either were not taken up or were not addressed um, in, in the way I thought it should be addressed. Uh, regarding uh, PTV4, um, we don't have to wait for the start of classes. We don't have to wait for you to finalize the program on, and the time slots. Um, kids have not been doing anything, especially those who do not have the the private schools to go to that are still ongoing. No, the public school has been out of school for months. Now, now, there are so many good programs that can already be played on PTV4. Para naman yung mga batawarin, may matutunan naman. No, go ahead and do it now. That does not have to be part of the formal um, education program that you will start in the school year in August, but this is summer learning. And also, I don't think my, I missed it. Um, I don't think anyone addressed my concern about summer learning. Like I said, in many countries where they have done these studies, nalulugi nga ang mga financially disadvantaged students who go to the public school systems, not the type that, not the type that are in the Nordic countries na yung public school system is the best, but like in America, because wala nga summer activities yung mga underprivileged children. That is why I want those kind of programs. Now is the best time we take advantage of a crisis to put in programs that are for long term. Itong mga summer programs, maganda naman talaga yan, hindi dapat natitigil ang pag-aaral. So sana, you put that in place para before August, alam nung mga, um, those who can afford, may mga libro, those who cannot, then yun ang bigyan natin. So yun lang, please put together some summer activities for these kids. Okay. And I will write a lengthier letter for the consideration of uh, DepEd um, and the Chair uh, moving forward. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Any comments from DepEd? Any reaction? Yusek, uh, Tony? Uh, may request Yusek Ann, Mr. Chair. Uh, okay. um, our Yusek Ann made some uh, comments in our chat group. Uh, if we okay. could ask our Yusek Ann, please. Yes, Yusek Ann, you're recognized. Ah, yeah, okay. I, I just put it in the chat box because, uh, Mr. Chair, the minimum health standard, the initial one, is already included in the presentation of Yusek Dads. We're just looking what slide number, but I, I think there is a enumeration already there. Okay. And uh, the more detailed one will be given to you as promised by you, Sek Tony. Uh, ongoing lang po yung pag finalize noon. But, but it's already there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, as a last uh, uh, reminder, um, I also saw in, in your report that marami time, not marami, no, but a few are teachers tested positive with COVID. And since teachers are, the teachers is uh, part of our constituency and they're an essential uh, component of delivering uh, quality education, uh, make sure that we take care of our teachers, um, especially those who are, uh, uh, those who tested positive. Um, may nakita kong report that uh, some of our teachers uh, are positive sila and let's, let's make sure that uh, they're, well taken care of no? until the end, until they recover. Uh, just a reminder to the DepEd family. So with that, uh, I will suspend the hearing because of the COVID uh, issue is an ongoing uh, concern. And uh, I don't think this we will see the end of COVID uh, tomorrow or, or, or next week. Uh, we will uh, suspend the hearing so that we can convene again and talk about uh, the medium and uh, long-term concerns on COVID. But uh, we will monitor the situation carefully and uh, let's get uh, up and running and ready you know, uh, by end of the month. So again, thank you uh, to DepEd. Thank you to our Senator, Senator Cayetano, Senator Marcos, Senator Tolentino, Senator Joel, and Senator Nancy for participating today. Uh, this meeting is hereby suspended. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. God bless Thank you. you. Bye, Chair. Happy weekend to everyone.